an opportunity for you guys to engage with us as a board. Uh, we ask all these things in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Mr. Ford. Um, item number four, roll call. Mr. Michael Lagarde. Here. Mr. Gregory Hardy. Here. Mr. Matthew Ford. Here. Mrs. Debbie Benoit. Mrs. Stacy Soleil. Here. Mr. Clyde Hamner. Here. Mr. Roger Dale Dehorn. Here. Dr. Maybell Trahan. Here. And Mr. Dane Barzan. Here. Mr. President, you have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bruna. Item number five, approval of minutes of school board meeting on May 3rd, 2022, and special school board meeting on May 17, 2022. So moved. Moved by Mr. Dehart. Second. Second by Dr. Trahan. Anyone else would like to um, uh, to discuss that uh, recommendation, Mr. Dehart? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Trahan? No, sir. Any board member? A uh, bad injection? Hearing none so ordered. Uh, before I go to item, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. At this particular time, also, too, that we need to have a, a moment of silence. <clears throat> Thank you. Please have a moment of silence for the following individuals who have recently passed away Lou Ethel Brown. Retired school custodian. Linda C. P. Retired central office secretary. Caroline Louise Whipple. Retired central office super supervisor of personnel. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Before I uh, <clears throat> go to um, item number six, I would like to. Uh, uh, thank Mr. Dehart uh, for making it out here uh, tonight. Uh, we it's know that he had broke his ankle or broke his foot or one, something like that. Broke my heel, yes. Yeah, but thank you for coming, sir. Well, I missed all of the information, but I, I kept up with all the news that's going on. So I'm so happy to be here. I can't put any weight on my foot. And uh, it's a long absence, but guess what? I, I had no other choice. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you all for all of the comments and prayers. Okay. Thank you. Item number six, special uh, recognition. Uh, South Turban High School, 22 class four baseball state champ, uh, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. President. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to recognize the young men tonight that are brought to South Turban High School the first ever state championship in 4A baseball. These young men, their courage, their character, their conviction is absolutely remarkable. And I think I don't exaggerate when I say it's been an inspiration for our entire community. Uh, we were all Gators when you won that championship. Overcoming the obstacles that these young men have overcome. I know they practice in one of the coaches' backyards, I think, literally. Uh, see, is a tribute to, to them, to their families, our coaches, the three young men that coached these young men. I, I, I like to know what you did, how you did that to maintain the morale, the, the uh, conviction, and that drove them all the way through. You know, they played a team that I think had was 38 and three or something like that. And y'all guys beat them. You did that throughout the entire season. You overcame obstacles. You didn't have excuses. You just worked harder and you got better. What I'd like to do at this time, I'd like to call up the three coaches and the principal, Mr. Pellegrin, and coach, I'd like for each player to come to the mic and introduce themselves after the coaches and principal have introduced themselves. And players, I'd like for you to give your name, senior position you played. So coaches, if y'all come forward and introduce yourself now and then we'll get, we'll get the players to come forward.
Uh, yeah, Coach uh, Mike Barba, uh, head coach. I guess I'm in charge of the whole operation. Uh, coach Simon Battle's not here today. He's actually still rebuilding his house from the storm. Assistant coach Mark Ogeron. Principal Blaze Pelligan. More guys. Gentlemen, if y'all would come one at a time to the microphone and introduce yourself to the board and tell us your grade level and what position you played. Christian Arsenault, senior pitcher. What's your name again? Say it again. Christian Arsenault. Shea Petrie, shortstop, senior. Bryce Lajani, senior pitcher. Austin Chalfon, junior pitcher. Henry Learett, junior third base. Yeah. Braden Claymore, freshman, Blaise. shortstop. Blaze. Blaze. I'm going to take a picture. Isaiah Black, junior pitcher. Hey, God. Cole John, sophomore center field. Trent Price, junior outfield. Lincoln Dupre, freshman, second base. Drake Dutillier, sophomore, catcher. Drew Petrie, sophomore, left field. Logan Mallard, sophomore, DH. Landon Oakland, junior, right field. Ethan McHugh, senior, second base. Braden Brunet, junior, pitch. Braden Bro, freshman, left field. Parker Nelton, freshman, catcher. <coughs> Gentlemen, most athletes go their entire life without being able to say this word, champion. Am I right, Mr. Harding? Hey, you don't have to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome and congratulate the state champions for a South Terrebonne Gator baseball team. Congratulations, young man. Before we go to the next presentation, I know there are some board members that want to make some comments. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the, the three board members that, that represent South Terrebonne to my left, uh, Dr. Trahan, then uh, Mr. Mike Lagarde, and then Mr. Dan Weiser. And if anybody, other board member want to make a comment, they, they're free to make that comment. Doc? I can't tell you how overwhelmed I was that day watching you play. It's the day I figured out how to mirror my telephone to the television so I could actually watch the game. I thought I was something else, okay? And, uh, and it actually worked. But it surprised me and my husband. Uh, you, you fellas are carrying the whole community on your shoulders. You t you're teaching us that the light at the end of the tunnel is there. We just got to keep moving toward it. I can't tell you how much we appreciate what you've done for this community, for this school, and for yourselves.
Mr. Guard, I, I think you're in the same boat I'm in, right? No championship? He <laughs> <laughs> just had to get somebody well, we, else in that P roll. We won a, a, a national championship at Ramley, you know. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, anyway uh, guys, man, I'm, I'm so proud of y'all. You know, and uh, I, I saw how y'all was just knocking teams down. I knew it. I knew it wasn't over, and it was like the perfect ending me. when y'all came back. But let me tell you something, guys. Like you say, state champion. Y'all don't understand the magnitude of this now. You don't. 30 years from now, mm -hmm. y'all gonna be talking about it. Somebody gonna be talking about it. 40 years from now, somebody gonna be talking about it. Y'all kids gonna talk about it. You know, and it, it was a great thing. And I'm gonna tell you something. Each and every one of you are leaders. Little kids are looking up to you. They may not come up to you, and I'm gonna tell you a little quick story. My son was like fourth grade, and I used to make him read the newspaper. And he picked one out of all the athletes in the newspaper, he picked one guy. And to reward him, I had to take him to the baseball games, to Nichols, and that was y'all coach. Out of all the athletes, he picked him, y'all coach, that he, 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 he thought he was better than, was famous than football players. Mike Barber was his world. <laughs> he loved Mike Barber. We went to Nichols game to make him behave in school in good, good grades. It was Mike Barber. And guys, I'm telling you this. Some little kid, it doesn't matter what color they are, or reading the paper, or seeing y'all, and y'all are the hero. Because you're my hero now. I, you're the community hero. We needed this. And you know, I felt so bad sending y'all to HL. <laughs> you know, I, I really did. I, I felt so bad y'all going to HL. But you know, now I got a trade off. I said, would you want to trade it back now? Because we don't know what would have happened. But guys, y'all did it. And y'all champions it. And we proud of you. And you know, as a former Gator, you know, as, as a Gator, you know, not too many of us are Gators up here, true Gators. You know, but, but I'm, I'm proud of y'all guys, and, 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 and keep it up. You know, we don't expect y'all to win it every year, but what you went through was so special. And, and I'm telling you, 10 years from now, 20 years, you're going to sit back and say, I see what they was talking about. You know, each and every one of y'all, like I just told Mr. Harding, I know Jerry, the quarterback, dad. We didn't win no football games. But when we see each other, them the best high school sport is better than college, better than pro. We talk about those days. And we was all friends. We had no friction, no problems. And we friends today, you know, and, and that gonna carry you guys. So I wanna thank y'all again, you know, y'all y'all made y'all y'all brighten me up. You give me courage when y'all won this. You really did, you know, so Y'all helping me and a lot of kids looking up to you. So as young men, y'all did it. You had to get them grades. You had, I know it was tough. It was tough. And people was doubting y'all. But like I said, I know y'all was going to do it because they don't know what we made it out here. I'll go in a fight with a gator any day than a tiger. So thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, if you be a little kind to Mr. Vise, then you go next. <laughs> well. You wouldn't know I'm a Gator because I forgot to wear my green shirt. <laughs> totally forgot. I thought about it yesterday. But, um, but again, without being repetitive, y'all are champions. Y'all are really champions. And we're so proud of you guys. The community needed it. Your parents are so proud of you guys. I have Facebook and oh my God. You know, some of those parents just constantly. And it's so great. It's so awesome to see that. You know, that they're so proud of you guys. And, and uh, parents, friends, family, community, y'all are an inspiration for so many young people. I know our program's gonna grow, huh? Right, it really will. Um, you know, the coach is doing a great job. We've had many conversations in the past and we're glad to help you guys. And, you know, Mr. Martin has helped in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I know we're gonna have some more help with the new superintendent. If y'all need anything, you know, please come to us. So, cause you know, we wanna help. We wanna help you guys continue. You know, they say it's once in a lifetime. I hope it's not. I hope we can repeat, right? Repeating. I think we can. 
I really do. Um, proud of you guys. I'm not going to be long-winded. Congratulations to the coaches. Congratulations to you guys, to the parents, to the community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Mr. DeHart. Well, I want to let y'all know I'm back, and I'm not going nowhere. I don't want y'all to think that only three or four board members on this board supported all the efforts y'all had over the years. Y'all baseball field, we didn't put y'all second to none. I'm talking about improvements for that. Y'all represented South Terrebonne gracefully and humbly, but also y'all represented Terrebonne Parish. That's what I believe in. And I am so proud to say whether it's your first one, that's, that sets the bar for everybody else that's gonna follow y'all. But to say that uh, you know just a few of us is supporting South Terrebonne, I will never let that fly, I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to be rude and ugly. It's just that I believe in all four of the high schools we have. I support Terrebonne Parish, and I wanna treat everybody fairly. And I think your principal, past and, and present uh, principal, knows that whenever we could, we did everything we could for every high school to try and treat everybody equal, and at the same time, give them opportunity, which today, y'all cherish that, that opportunity. And with the great coaching staff and the parent support and the community support, y'all did make us very proud. So I want to say that all nine of us up there, I know whenever y'all won it, it was all over the way, uh, telephone waves, and guess what? Everybody was commenting and very proud of y'all. So don't never think that all nine of us are not supporting all of y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Okay, Mr. Ford. I mean, I, I've been proud of y'all for, for a long time now because I have friends that have been helping out with the program. But I just wanted to take a minute and echo what uh, Mr. Lagarde said. <clears throat> I was a, a sophomore the class of 1991, right? I was a sophomore in 1991, and we had to play against the state championship Gators football team. And I remember getting beat pretty bad at the beginning of the year. And then at the end of the year, when they went to the state championship and they won, uh, I remember the discussion was, well, of course they beat us. They just won the state championship. And, and it may not make any sense to you now, and it may not mean anything to you, but it, like Ms. Lagore said, in 10, 20, 30 years, you're still going to be talking about this. The feeling that you guys had when you won that state championship even if you don't win another game in the rest of your life, that feeling will never escape you. You will always be able to go back to that. So I'm very proud of you. I've never won a state championship, but I have won a couple of games as a college uh, athlete myself. So keep up the good work, and we're all proud of you up here. Thank you. Okay. Any other board member? Okay, I guess I ended off. I well put Mr. DeHart. I just felt that I would give the board members uh, that lived in that area the opportunity to speak first. And of course, all nine of us are proud of each and every uh, one of you. And I'm not going to be redundant. And like uh, Mr. Lagarde uh, said, you know, it, it's, it's not going to affect you two years later on down the road. I'm just going to say this here. It takes a special group of kids and coaches to make this happen. You did something special. It just don't happen. Mr. Martin clowned me. Earlier, say that I never won a championship. That's true. <laughs> so that goes to show you, no matter what level a person reach, and I've reached a higher level there than most people. It takes a special group of chemistry, teamwork, and believing in each other out there, knowing where each other's supposed to be out there on that baseball field. So congratulations to you. Congratulations also to your parents, because I know it was a sacrifice uh, going to HF Bourgeois, uh, practicing odd times during the day, having to go to school. But what better way you can do it? What better way? We're just proud of you. So thank you. And we, like Mr. Vazan said, hey, listen, guess what? Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again, okay? Congratulations. Okay, uh, we move now on I on item six B. If you, if you guys want to leave now, you can actually leave now. If you want to leave now, parents.
but y'all probably got pretty bored. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, now we move along on the agenda, item 6B, uh, Mr. Martin. We are very proud tonight to recognize two young men that, can, that attend Lewis Miller T uh, T Career Technical Center. Oftentimes, the accomplishments in the areas of career and technical fields perhaps don't sometimes get the limelight that it truly deserves and the recognition of those kids who are doing wonderful things in that. We have two students to attend Lewis Miller who've taken the automotive, automotive service excellence exam. If, if you ever go into a mechanic shop, if you go to a dealership, you'll see ASC certified technicians. That's the test they took. Uh, so it's, it's a very rigorous industry standard, highly respected in the industry. And we have two young men who've passed all 10 parts. One's a sophomore and one's a junior. So we want to recognize them tonight. At this time, I'd like Camden Dutu and Kobe Kramer to come forward, please. <laughs> now, you're going to have to help me which one's Camden, which one's Kobe. Which help? You're Camden? All right. Well, both of you young men have so much to be proud of, and you have such a bright future. I want to emphasize that to you. To do this, did I have that right, sophomores and juniors? Do I have that right? Well, now you're going to be juniors and seniors for next year, I guess. You, you know, and I've talked to people in the field and told them what you guys accomplished, and they're just kind of like, that's amazing. So, you obviously, the credit goes to your instructor, to the school you've attended, and you've obviously, you know, you, you get out of what something of what you put into it. You guys obviously put a lot into it and prepared yourself well. We congratulate you on your accomplishments, uh, and, and we know bigger and better things in store for you down the road. Congratulations, young man. <laughs> you you got to say something at the mic. You don't have to give a speech, but you got to say something. Yeah. My name is Kobe Kramer, and I go to South Terrebonne. Kobe, is your parents here? Yes. Would you all stand, mom and dad? I, I hope you all have some more kids to send to us. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Camden Dutu. I go to Ellender. And uh, I plan on going to a college in Ohio after for high school. Who, who's with here? You? with you tonight, Camden. Uh, my favorite. Would y'all stand, please? <laughs> you have any younger brothers or sisters? Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Congratulations, young men. Congratulations Mr. Martin. To both of you. Mr. Martin. I would like to say something. I mean, I, I know this young man here, Kobe, I've uh, been knowing him since he's very young, and he's an outstanding individual, dedicated. Um, it doesn't surprise me. I'm so proud of you. You know, you've come a long way, and keep up the good work, right? You're an awesome kid, and I'm sure you are too, right? But I haven't known you since you were a little kid, you know, but I've been knowing this guy since, what, six, seven years old? Yeah, okay. I haven't known you that long, huh? <laughs> but I'm sure you're great. <laughs> Mr. Lagarde. Thank you, guys. Mr. Ford. 
knowing a thing or two about the uh, ASC certifications and having only two of them myself, you guys have far surpassed what I've ever done as far as formal training. So I want to encourage you to keep that up. Uh, you talked about going to the school in Ohio. I'm, a well, I'm a well aware of what school you're talking about. And I actually have some friends out there in the Ohio Valley area. And uh, when you get out there, if you're looking for somewhere to work, I might be able to hook you up. <laughs> but when you come back to South Louisiana, which is what I highly recommend you to do, this is, this is the place that you can build a career as an automotive technician, as a mechanic, you know, whether it's high performance or whether it's diesel, whatever the, whatever the choice you make is, uh, there's work out there, there's opportunity out there. And if you want to work this summer, you might be able to have some cash jobs for you then too. So keep it up, good job, and keep up the hard work. All right, appreciate it. Dr. Trahan? I just want to give you both my personal congratulations. I know it was a hard road to get where you are. I know you had to study a lot and dedicate yourselves. Uh, I might be calling you one day. I'm nursing a 2006 Avalanche Chevrolet right now. <laughs> and, uh, and I refuse to buy another one unless Chevrolet starts building new avalanches. So maybe you guys will, will develop that vehicle for me. Because I'm still waiting for somebody to build something I like. I'm not an SUV or a, or a pickup truck person. And I love my avalanche, and I'm, I'm going to nurse it as long as I can. But I'm so proud of both of you, and I cannot wait to see where your future brings you. Again, I want to reiterate, uh, congratulations to each one of you young men. Uh, you're an example of, of our future. Uh, there's always a lot of negativity in the news, but always bad things, always sell papers. Good things don't. And we got a lot of good individuals that's coming up. And congratulations to each one of you again, and have a great summer. Yeah, come on, come, here, come on, take a picture. You got a baseball game tonight? Oh, okay. You <laughs> <laughs> got Bird, huh? It's Bird? Where do you play at? Just face that way. Face huh? Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, item number seven, uh, Mr. Philip Martin, Goodwill message. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Tonight is my last board meeting as superintendent after 15 years in Terwan Parish. Before I begin, I want to recognize my wife. I have to point this out. Karen, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is Karen's first board meeting that she attends as I'm superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously will be the last one. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, you know, as superintendent, it, it, I just want to tell the board that being superintendent is the biggest privilege and honor I've ever had working for this board. I've, it's been a wonderful career. I can't believe it's 48 years. <laughs> for those of y'all that are thinking, well, how old must he be? I started when I was eight. <laughs> The, the uh, privilege to work with this board and work the employees and the students in this district, it has been my honor and privilege to do so. I know that we've had many successes and we've had many challenges, but we've always worked together. And the employees of this school district, the children of this school district, you saw them tonight. Sometimes I wonder, they actually pay me to do this. Uh, it's been, it's, been, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, I'm leaving happy. I'm leaving, uh, I'm not thinking about changing my mind, by the way, I'm not, that, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but I, I am leaving happy, and I want to express to my employer that I've, the support you've given to me through the years uh, and, 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 and through me to the district is truly, truly appreciated. And, and I don't have the words to uh, express that adequately, but I want to say thank you. Thank you. 
And that's basically my goodbye speech, everybody. <laughs> opportunity every board member I know they have something they would like to say and I'm going to start with Mr. Dehart and he's going to work our way around the board and, and we'll go from there. Mr. Dehart. I didn't break my foot so I could be the first to speak either but I'm glad you chose me first. I say right now that I am the senior board member on this board for the amount of years and I had the pleasure of serving with many good board members over these years but I can tell you right now uh, it's been quite a, a challenge all of the years that we've worked together, Mr. Martin and I and this boards, that right now I'll tell you that the Honeydew list is coming, Mr. Martin, so get ready. Uh, I am very happy to say that you served this system well. Your wife is a retiree from this school system. I know she was an excellent teacher. And I'm very proud of your son being a superintendent in Lafouche Parish. So you got quite a few accomplishments. But all of that said, thank you for your service. It's been a, my pleasure working with you. And now we need to hurry and get a picture of it to put near you on the wall like everybody else has put because I tell you what, I've had this honor of serving with many of these superintendents and you're one of the most out, uh, outstanding out of, out of the group. And I, I am pleased to serve with all of them too. That uh, not everybody that's on the wall, but I'm just saying <laughs> it's been, <laughs> I'm not that old yet, okay? <laughs> but but I'm, I'm really humbled to say that, you know, we've had so many obstacles not just Hurricane Ida and all of this stuff, but we made it through it all. And what I gracefully want to say, and then I'm a, I'm a, I know I'm long-winded because I've been building up for months to come up and say things, is that I remember whenever you first took office as superintendent, and it's no reflection on the board or the past superintendents, it was difficult times. We were always ranked in the 40s academically in the school system. I know you know where I'm coming from. And we've risen way up there and, and for sure the top 20 and above and that's a record uh, and alone of a conference and because of your leadership and cooperation working with the board so that's quite a milestone and I'm just saying I wish every every board member would have the experience to have witnessed that kind of stuff from academically successful which we whenever we was in the middle of the pack or toward toward the bottom we were still doing well for being as large as we are and now look where we are and thank you again for all what you do. Thank, thank you, Mr. Dehart. Mr. Hamler. Yeah, Philip. Yeah, Philip, I just want to say that uh, Karen, you've done an excellent job keeping him <laughs> in line. Thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, it's been great. I've been knowing Mr. Martin since 1980. What I started in '84. No, I started in 1980. But I think I met you in 83 or 84. Paul Johnson introduced me to you in the front of uh, Ellender Junior High back then. I think you were the assistant principal. And that's the first time we met. And uh, I remember Paul Johnson having a lot of uh, nice things to say about you back then, and they've all come true. So it's been a pleasure knowing you all these years and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, knowing you in retirement. and on uh, September the 15th, it's a Thursday at, uh, uh, doors open at nine o'clock, is the uh, Terrebonne Retired Teachers Association meeting at Ellendale Country Club. <laughs> Be there. Be there. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Hamner. Ms. Benoit? Oh, Mr. Martin, I have so many things that are running through my mind that I wanna say, but I, I, I just have to say that um, I'm so happy that you were the superintendent for all of my tenure here uh, as a board member. Uh, it's been 12 years, going on 13, and um, I can't think of another person that I have worked so well with. Um, I've come to you with problems over the years and you've resolved them. You've uh, always been open to uh, help me with constituents' concerns and, um, you know that you know the the uh, the story behind the Peter principle, where people reach their level of incompetency. Well, I knew you as a supervisor, not well, but I worked here as a grant writer at the time. Um, I really got to know you as a superintendent, and I have to say 
the PETA principle does not apply to you. You have never reached your level of incompetency. You have exceeded that in, as superintendent, and I've been proud to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Mr. Ford. Wow, Uncle Phil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know I've challenged you several times, and you've challenged me right back, and I've always loved and appreciated your direct approach. You've always been candid with me, and I've always been candid with you. We haven't always been on the same page, but here we are in your last meeting, and I feel like I may end up missing you. <laughs> <laughs> you won me over, and I told you something last week at your at your farewell uh, lunch, and it's something that's been on my mind for a while, and, and it's the idea that you've raised the bar. 48 years, you know, I'm only 46, right? So you've been in this school system longer than I've been alive. But, you know, there's been no more steady, you know, there's, there's been no one else in my life that I can honestly say that I can look up to and say that I want to emulate. Even though we've never, we've always been, you know, like oil and water at times, I've always looked up to you and I've always appreciated you. And maybe one day I'll be lucky enough to be in that seat or another just like you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Ford. Thank, Thank you. Dr. Trejo. I have known you, sir, in so many capacities. At a point where you, you didn't know me. As a parent, my two older kids went to Ellen the Junior High. As a fact, my oldest daughter was the co-captain of the band alongside Blaze Pellegrin, drum major, is with the correct term. Wore the, proudly wore the orange and black of Ellen the Junior High. I knew you as a, as a teacher, as a substitute teacher, as a teacher, as an administrator, uh, and now as a board member. And I have to say I've come to know you with such more depth since I have gotten this position. And I'm very grateful for having had that opportunity because now I know you as a person. And I know you are, your heart is always in the right place and you always ran this system with the benefit going to the child. And I appreciate that, and I know a lot of people that appreciate that. And that was shown in the way you operated, always open, always had the door open, always giving your phone numbers to any parent that needed to talk with you. And uh, that was evident, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Charles. Mr. Lagarde. Uh, I'm not gonna tell a story, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Everybody knows it already. <laughs> What you gonna say? You know, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more time. Knows. Go ahead, Mike. I, I was at the <laughs> council meeting, and somebody said, "That's the guy who the principal pounded." It's the school board member. Well, I'm not gonna tell a story. But Mr. Martin, I, I would like to uh, thank you for all the years. I've been mean, knowing you since I was 12 years old, and uh, you know, I, I, man, I, I was guilty sometimes. You're not as <laughs> proud. But, uh, you know, get, getting to know you, and I know it's been a tough situation, things you had to do, but I, I did like the fairness you had, you know, and it was a, it's a time, you know, and I, and I like the diversity that you had, and I know it was tough, you know, the staying on those principles in South Louisiana, you know, I, I know it was real tough, but you did, you know, and, if you wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't be here. I probably would have moved somewhere else, you know. And uh, all of us, my age, who was at Oakland, unfortunate, if we have to remember one principal, we remember you and Mr. Coy. We don't know nobody else. And everybody, like I told them kids, everybody I meet from them days, there's two people we talk about, Mr. Martin, Mr. Cole, we don't know. Nobody else was there, <laughs> you know. And uh, but it was a reason, you know. You, you was fair to us, you know. We did wrong, we got a hit, and we kept it moving, you know. We didn't get suspended, but you know, you give that whack outside the door. We understood. We didn't come to school for trouble. So you know, as a man and a young man in the system, I want to thank you. You know, I, I know your wife. 
she gonna put you at the Votech, baby. You gonna be here telling us about your automotive license. <laughs> Cause after a week, she gonna like you got to get out of here. <laughs> you know? But uh, see, when you come back knocking on that door, want your job back. I may have to get that powder. And, and <laughs> but but serious, thank you. And you know, I think all the employees, you know, they felt you was fair with them. Now, if anybody had to be fair, not everybody not gonna win. You're going to always have some losers, but I think overall they appreciate it. I know I have, you know, and I know my wife, my family, all of us have. So thank you. And the next half, because like you say, you're going to do something else. You're still a young man, you know, so, so I want to thank you, and I want to thank you from the kids from the east side, because we went to school where we had to fear fair with the principal, and we felt that we would choose. You know, it was a rough time, but we trusted you. You know, we trusted that you was going to treat us right. And that's a major thing with a school and kids and the principal. They have to feel comfortable. And we did. For whatever reason, you made us feel comfortable out of everybody there. So we would like to thank you and everybody I talked to. They were like, Mr. Martin, they say, what are you doing? Now? Remember, he did us this, whipped us for being back. Like, yeah, yeah, but it was a good thing. That was the bottom line. It was a good thing. And, uh, you know, working with you on the board has been good. Anytime I call you, I got the fair answer. And we worked out the problems. And many times I called you about Eleanor. And you was always there to find a solution. And I appreciated that, that you understood that we didn't have certain things. So I'm going to miss you. And uh, like I told the paper, you wanted to come back, I really felt the board would have took you back. <laughs> but you're going to have the times, and Miss Sajero have some big shoes to fill. You know, I'm kind of scared for him. I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> you know, you done set the bar. So thank you and your wife and your family because they had to give you to do this job. You know, they missed out on a lot because you was working this job. So I would like to thank you from District 1. And thank I you, Mr. Lagarde. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lagarde. Miss Ole. I have worked with you when I was a teacher and you were the principal at Home Junior High. I have worked with you when I was a principal and you were a supervisor and assistant superintendent. And I have worked with you when I was a supervisor and you were the superintendent. And I cannot thank you enough for all the support that you gave me personally and most importantly, always keeping the children, what's in the best interest of the children first. Thank you. And I learned a lot from that. So thank you very, very, very much for all of your support and I wish you the very best. Thank you, Ms. Soley. Ms. Advisor. I, I first met you or knew you uh, when I was assistant principal. I didn't really know you as a teacher, but I, you know, as assistant principal and I can remember, I was scared of you. <laughs> I remember I did something as an assistant principal, which I won't tell that story. But, uh, you know, I got a little, a little bit of trouble, but, you know, I figured it out. But then I knew I could come to you for advice and support. And when I became principal, I needed that. It was, it was a tough job. I enjoyed it. But, you know, I had a little hard time for something that came, went through and you were supportive. And it all worked out. And I do appreciate that. What sticks to me probably most in my mind with you is 2014, right? It was probably May or the first week of June in 2014. I went to your office, and that's when I had made that hard decision. And I came to your office and I said, Mr. Martin, I said, I'm, make, I'm making a decision that I'm retiring. And I said, uh, and you looked at me like, what? <laughs> and I said, yep. I'm going to open my own driving school, my own business. And I remember you telling me, you know, would you stay? Would you do both? You asked me to stay and do both. And I, that meant a lot because I knew that you didn't want to lose me. Um, and it, it meant a lot to me, and I appreciate that. Um, the other thing I'm going to say, Mr. Ken Delcom, when he was principal, he gave some advice to me, and I'm kind of piggyback on what Mr. Dehart said earlier about getting your picture up there. He told me, he said, Dane, if you ever become principal, take the picture your first day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait till you retire. 
and I'll let you figure that out. All right. <laughs> that was good advice. Yes, yes. But thank you again for everything. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Wazem. Well, Mr. Martin, I'm, I'm not going to be redundant. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, uh, thank your wife uh, for sharing you with us and with the school district. I, I know that, um, like Mr. Legault stated earlier, that there was times where, you know, you missed out on op other opportunities to be with your family, but your dedication to this district was here. And I don't know if you remember, you probably do remember, you got a good memory. You're not seeing out anything. You ain't seen out yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I think when you first became superintendent, and I think you probably know what I'm about ready to say, we had a superintendent that was here prior to, and we had two superintendents that came after that superintendent. And during that time, people were still talking about the past superintendent. And I think I told you, Mr. Martin, I said, what you need to do, and I think you did that, I said, I think you, you need to plant your seeds on solid ground so that when you do leave us, when one of these days when you do leave us, that your legacy will speak for itself, that your name will be talked about, what you did for the district. And we can look at HL Bourgeois. We can, we can look at South Down. Or we can look at Marbury. Uh, we can look at Grand Caillou. We can look at the AB school district that we have not cost the taxpayers any extra, extra money at all. You did that. You did that in over beyond that. And I told you, and I, and I told you that. And, and I meant what I said, and I think, you know, I think when I told it to you, maybe at that time you didn't really, it didn't dawn on you what I was talking about. I think as the years went on, or maybe not years, you realized what I was talking about. And you accomplished those things way beyond my imagination. And that just was a couple of things that, that you accomplished. A couple of things you accomplished. Because and, and, I can go on and on and on and on. But those are some of the things that people could, tangible things people can actually touch and people can see. There are many other things that people can't touch and can't see that you have done. You have been fair down the line. And you know what? We have always got along. We have always got along, and I, I've called you names and you called me names. <laughs> <laughs> But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, guess what? When the decision was made, I was your friend and you was my friend. And I just want to just thank you. You know, thank you. I, I, like I said, I served under three, I actually used the four superintendent. And, and by far, I can say this, I don't have no shame to my game. I feel that you have been the best. I, I'm sure some of these other board members have that probably, Mr. Dehart probably can say the same, but I feel that you have been the best superintendent that I could, that I could serve with. You have taught me, you have laboring in the right direction, you know, and like I said, we didn't grow on everything, but guess what, we moved on, and we're to this point now. So again, thank you, Mr. Martin, for your 14 or 15 years, 14 years as superintendent, and 48 years as, as in this system. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Harding. At this time, Mr. Martin, we uh, don't don't take off yet. I know you're ready to leave. Uh, we have a presentation from Ms. Debbie Benoit. Yeah. Well, um, it's not from me, but um, actually, it's from it, the board. It, yeah, it's from a, the board. Well, no, it's a presentation, presentation. right, from uh, Ms. Ashley Barahona. Um, it's a special gift to you, and uh, she would like to present it from uh, TFAE. Yes. Okay, is this thing on? We're good. You good. Ashley Barahona, 856 Barrett Street. I am the executive director of the Terrebonne Foundation for Academic Excellence, also known as TFAE. To date, we have delivered over 350,000 books to children in Terrebonne Parish, ages zero to five. We have also granted over $2 million to educators in Terrebonne Parish since 2012. I'm here tonight to announce the creation of a new grant this new grant has been created to support science education and science educators in the Terrebonne Parish public school system. A few months back, a call to action was sent out and companies and individuals near and far rose to the, the occasion. I'm happy to announce that the seed money has been successfully raised for the Philip Martin Fund. Money, many may not know this, but Mr. Martin's educational journey began 
in the science classroom. Therefore, it's only fitting that your namesake continues to impact the labs and the science rooms right here in Terrebonne Parish. So before you ride off into the sunset, know that your half a century commitment, almost half a century commitment, <laughs> and dedication to not only this community, but to education will continue to live on in the form of the Philip Martin Science Grant, impacting lives, advancing equipment, and molding the minds of the kids in this parish for many years to come. So on behalf of the Terrebonne Parish, Terrebonne Academic, of Ex Academic Excellence and our Board of Directors, we want to say congratulations on your retirement. And also, all those fine words y'all were saying can equate to dollar signs as well. Since the, we established it, we can always grow it. Mr. Martin, since you heard all these good things said about you, do you would like to have a closing remark, sir? You know, I, I can't think of a better honor. I've never felt so honored. That's that's quite quite a. Uh, thank you. It's 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 it's. Uh, uh, well, it's now time to turn the chair over <laughs> to my successor, who is going to. A year from now, y'all will say, "Why the heck did we wait so long? Why didn't we get Why didn't we get Mr. Ozier on here sooner?" Uh, Bubba, the chair is yours. Number nine, concerning citizen, 9A, is Vicki Clauderfell lunch money withheld? Good evening. Thank you all for letting me come. I wanted to tell Mr. Martin, thank you for your service. Um, thank you all for letting me come tonight. Vicki Cluche, Shriver, okay. Louisiana. Okay. I'm going to remember that. Um, I appreciate, appreciate you all letting me talk. Um, Basically, uh, I'm here to speak to this body and, and in doing so, speak to the public um, regarding uh, a press release and, and a, a something that's coming down from um, the Biden administration that concerns our children. Um, and I'll just read this first um, sentence in an article. K through 12 schools must allow boys into girls private areas to obtain federal funds for lunches, breakfasts, and snacks. And the, Bi uh, the Biden administration announced this month, a United States Department of Education spokesman told the Federalist the Biden administration's press release from several agencies announcing this policy will be followed by formal rulemaking in June. We are now in June. Each of you has um, four um, articles, and I took the liberty of printing these out, these out for you and um, highlighting them so to make it a little bit easier for you to scan through. And they are in chronological order, starting with um, an executive order from uh, Joe Biden when he fir the first day in office regarding um, these issues and on through up until, I think, the 25th of May. Um, so basically, um, what they're wanting to do 
is to put us over a barrel and to force us to do things that we don't want to do in order to feed the children. I mean, I can't really believe I'm standing here saying these words, but here we are. None of you asked for this. Our superintendents didn't ask for this. Our parents, our citizens have not asked for this, but, but here we are. And so if we do not comply, they don't feed the children with the federal dollars that you've been get, used to getting. If we do comply, the entire school will suffer and would become a transgender school, meaning that every little girl or every teenage girl in that school will have to live their school days knowing that a little boy or a teenage boy has the right to walk in that bathroom, no matter if that girl is there to fix her hair in the mirror or, forgive me, on her period and having to change a mess, um, if that little girl is sick at her stomach, trying to deal with it, if she's been treated poorly by a friend and needs a moment to cry, it doesn't matter. That girl will have to live with some boy coming into her bathroom and it will no longer be a safe place for her and vice versa. It's political blackmail. And I believe that you all agree that the answer to this is absolutely no. And I think of the three questions that I've learned to ask for a tough situation. Is it biblical? Is it constitutional? And does it make common sense? And the answer is no to every single one of those. So I say, and I believe that you say, and the parents say, not in our town, not in our schools, not in Terrebonne or Lafouche Parish, not with our girls. No way. You know, the answer is no. Excuse me, ma'am, your three minutes are up. Second. Move by Mr. Hamm, second by Mr. Benoit. Thank you. Um, I did talk to Mr. Bob Ogeron on the phone, and I, it made me just feel so happy to hear that he did know this was coming down the pike, and he told me he had already started making plans um, of how he might deal with it, calling the attorney general, talking to the parish president, talking to the sheriff, talking to the community. Um, I talked to a couple of board members. I, I can tell on y'all if I can. Mr. Clyde, you know, he said, we don't need, we don't need that money for the food. We'll, we'll find a way. Ms. Debbie said the same thing. We can make sandwiches. I mean, there's a way to do this. And so we're coming to you to say, we support you. We want to work with you. We will do whatever it takes um, as an organization, as citizens, as grandma bears, mama bears, papa bears, you know, whatever we need to do. Um, I want to read um, something from one of our founding fathers, Alexander Hamilton. He said, the sacred rights of mankind are not to be rummaged for among old parchments or musty records. They are written as with a sunbeam in the world, in the whole volume of human nature by the hand of the divinity, which would be Jesus Christ, and can never be erased. Sacred rights of mankind. Our children are not for sale. We will not sacrifice them. And I speak to you guys, superintendents, administrators, board members, this may very well be the single most important pivotal challenge that you will face in your career here. Um, I know we all agree that we love our children. I thank you for that. I know you love freedom, and I thank you for that. We have to love our children's freedom more than we love our own. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Item 9B, Ms. Glenda Fungi, school lunch uh, threatened by Biden administration, boys using girls' restroom. Thank you, Glenda Fungi, uh, Shelley Court, home of Louisiana. Thank you for letting me to speak. Ditto to what Ms. Vicki said. Uh, this is from the Federalist.com article dated May 25th. Name and address, please, ma'am. Oh, I did, did I not? Glenda you Fungi? Didn't. She you did? Said. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, didn't hear okay. I apologize. <laughs> um, from the article dated May 25th, 2022, by uh, Joy Pullman. The title was Biden Administration K through 12 Schools Must Put Boys, uh, Must Allow Boys and Girls Bathrooms to Get Federal Lunch Money. So we're being told that money that is paid, and this is a national level, the schools for the breakfast, lunch, and snacks programs will be withheld unless schools implement the demands to allow boys to use girls' restrooms, dressing rooms, and showers. This is immoral, insane, and puts unnecessary anxiety and fear on students, parents, and teachers. This is a setup for failure. 
Now in this era, we've been hit all over really with COVID and we've navigated teaching our kids through that. We got hit with Hurricane Ida and the loss of homes, jobs, belongings, resources, and we're still making it through that. Today, with the pressures mounting from rising food costs, have you seen the food bill and fuel cost? And now we have this administration pushing this agenda, this fear on our families, most vulnerable students threatening to have a food source cut if we do not comply. And these are some of my concerns, that our girls will stop using these areas and they'll have to relieve themselves and clean up from their monthly when they get home. And for some, that may be an all day wait the health risks, risks that are involved in this, uncontrolled accidents, the fear, the humiliation, the stress levels, the emotional toil for these girls will be horrible. I mean, I can remember going to Terrebonne High and going into the stalls and checking to see who all was in there, making sure it was a girl. Back then, I can't imagine what these girls would have to go through checking the stalls for fellas. The stress level for parents over the safety of their daughters having to use these private areas will be off the charts. We're talking mama bears, papa bears on these campuses. And then uh, will the teachers have to cut their teaching time to escort students to the bathroom and also monitor the dressing areas? Our schools must continue to be safe. And the example here is Loudoun County, Virginia, where a 15 year old girl went to the restroom and a young man in a skirt followed her in there and raped her. I have a 15 year old granddaughter, as some of you do, and daughters and nieces, I would hate for this to happen in our area. Then there's the possibility of lawsuits to contend with. I think at this point, parents will just decide to remove their kids from public schools altogether and choose to do homeschooling or private schooling. I would hate to see that happen. As I've sat here in these school board meetings, I've listened to each of you express your hearts of love and concern for our kids, and I appreciate that. And I know that you don't want this either. So I think as citizens and parents and administrators and school board representatives, we should take a stand and work together and say that we will not comply. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Your meeting is up. Um, moved by Ms. Milmar, second by Mr. Ford. Concluding. Any objection? You know, sorry. I believe that we can work together and navigate through this obstacle with people, with the resources that we have, and that we will not be stopped. As a community, we will not let our children down. The ones needing the assistance will not go without, and the ones needing to be protected will be protected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Item 9C, uh, is George and Carlos recently federal push to allow access, access to previous female only facility for those identified as transgender. Good evening. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Orgeron, welcome to the uh, hornet's nest. Um, uh, George Crowdis, uh, home of Louisiana. Um, so here we go again. We're in a situation where the federal government seeks to hold a local community hostage, not at the barrel of a, at the end of a barrel of a gun, but of a pot of money. The current federal administration is threatening to withhold food funds from schools that choose not to allow access to female facilities by males who decide on any given day that they are now female. This action would not be limited to bathrooms, but also locker rooms, showers, and anywhere else formerly designated as female only, including possibly sports. From a legal standpoint, there are those who say that if the schools do not comply, they will face lawsuits from those who support such measures. That may or may not be true. But will schools, but will not schools also face lawsuits if what happened in Loudoun County, Virginia in 2021 happens in Terrebonne Parish? The lady previous to be mentioned the, uh, the article and what happened, this is just a year ago. Um, to just add on to what she said in regards to what happened in Loudoun County, the student entered the bath bathroom and committed forcible sodomy and forcible fellatio against a 15 year old girl. I had to look up the word fellatio, so don't worry, but what basically what it is, is it's, it's, it's oral sex. So what they did was instead of punishing the, the student, they just transferred him to another school where six months later he did it to another girl. 
Some might also argue, as the Loudoun County School Board did, that these events would be rare. But is it necessary to find out whether they would be rare or not? If this happened to your daughter or your granddaughter, would not once be too much? Putting aside the legal concerns, let's talk about the political issue. Let's stop and think about what's actually happening here. A federal government is threatening communities all across these United States to withhold food from children because parents dare to express concerns about biological males sharing intimate quarters with biological females. In times past, words used to describe this kind of activity might include blackmail, coercion, possibly tyranny. So let's not kid ourselves that there are communities all across this country that will have no problem implementing these new mandates. But there are also numerous communities throughout the country, quite probably here in Terrebonne Parish, that might have a different set of standards or political ideas that run contrary to the current administration. It is these communities that are the true targets of this errant policy. And finally, it's often said that Excuse money. Excuse me, Mr. Crowder. Is, you know, your three minutes up. Uh, Mr. To Ford extend. and uh, Mr. Hamm, uh, any interjection? Yeah, no, so on. And f so I can, I can continue? You're okay. good. Yeah. And finally, it, it is often said that money is the root of all evil. However, this is actually a misquote. The actual quote comes from the Bible in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, where it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money in and of itself is not evil, but when we allow money to influence moral decisions, then we begin to find ourselves as individuals and as a community in a place where the latter half of that same scripture begins to unfold. This is the latter half of that same scripture. Quote, which while some coveted after, meaning money, they have strayed from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I ask the school board to strongly consider, is it worth piercing the community through with many sorrows? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item number 10, announcement, 621 5 p.m. Finance Insurance and Section 16 Lane Committee, Executive Committee, Education, Technology, and Policy Committee, Build, Building Food Service Chapter Committee, 705 Regular School Board Meeting. Item number 11, Board Committee Meeting Report, 11A. Building Food and Service Committee uh, meeting. Uh, report, Mr. Dan Vizan. Thank you, Mr. President. The Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee met immediately following the 5 p.m. special school board meeting on Tuesday, May 17, 2022, in the boardroom <clears throat> with uh, myself as chair and Mr. Harding. Um, Mr. DeHart, vice chair, wasn't present. Um, also in attendance was Mr. Hamner, Ms. Benoit, Mr. Ford, Ms. Soleil, Mr. Lagarde, Superintendent uh, Ogeron, and members of his staff. Recommendation number one, the committee recommends that the board enter into a bus lease agreement Gulf, between Gulf South Social Services and Terrebonne Parish School Board effective June 14, 2022 to July 26, 2022 to provide bus usage for Gulf Coast Services, Le Cirque, Summer camp provided buses shall run during normal operating hours on weekdays as needed mileage reimbursement at a rate of $1.75 per mile. Provide and pay bus drivers approved by Terrebonne Parish School Board provided all necessary insurance requirements are met and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So, so move Mr. Harding, second Mr. Hamner. Any public comments? Mr. Harding? No, sir. Mr. Hamner? No. Any board members? Yes, Mr. Uh, DeHart. I'd like to offer a substitute motion to, to, that the committee recommends the exact same wording except for the, the exception of wave to waive policy at an adjusted rate based on the, the price of diesel at the time of the use. And if I get a second, I'll explain 
more information about that, it will still allow them to use it. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would think that, that my information be pertinent if I get a second. Just uh, I'll discussion. give him a second. Okay, Mr. Hamner. Okay, go ahead, Mr. DeHart. Okay. Right now, <clears throat> beyond our control, we have been having an escalation in prices for fuel, just fuel alone, and every commodity that our buses need. Rental fees and everything, everything's going uh, skyrocketing for the economy. I definitely want to encourage us to continue allowing organizations to use file youth to get the experience and the, the, the services that we can help provide. But whenever diesel right now is almost $6 a gallon, the, the policy of $1.75 a mile is really outdated. And to, instead of voting no for something, I was trying to ask board members to really think very seriously about what what the cost, you know, we, we incurring costs, it's worthy of it, but I think it would be a fair thing to allow the cost to be adjusted. That, that's why, and I spoke to the superintendent and assistant superintendent, and I'm just saying that I'm not putting words in their mouths, but I'm just saying this is something that we're gonna have to look at. If we approve this tonight at this rate and decide to change it later, well, all I'm saying is that I'm trying to be fair with everybody that uses our facilities and stuff because of right now maintenance costs, you know, is still escalating. Fuel costs is escalating. That's why I'm off on the substitute motion. I hope y'all can understand what my rationale is to not stop them from using it, but to assist us on what it costs. And that way uh, we, we can still fund our part and do for our, our constituencies and stuff like that, taxpayers. Thank you, Mr. Hart. I appreciate that because it was uh, something I did bring up in the committee meeting that I think we need to make adjustments to this. So I totally agree with that, but I'm not sure. It, is it something that we're still looking into or? Yes. It is. And so what do it right now as a wave of policy and make an adjustment. Okay. Staff but, make an adjustment. Now, but we, would we be able to say a certain amount at this moment? Okay. I don't know. It, 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 right. Okay. Okay, y'all did. Okay, because I, I didn't know yeah. if y'all researched that to see what that, we that need to do. Would, so 250 is kind of a recommendation. Yes. Okay. Um, fair rate. A fair rate. Okay. Mr. Hamner, you had something? Well, you, yeah, I was. Uh, <clears throat> didn't like the idea that it was open-ended. I wanted it to be a recommendation from y'all. Right. You've discussed it in staff, and that's the recommendation. Okay, that's what I want to know. So then it, we, it would change that the mileage reimbursement at a rate of 250. Is everybody, how do we follow that? In agreement with that or? Okay, Mr. Um, Lagarde? You know, I don't think we, we, we should let Mr. Obayam who do that we should let them come and tell us, you know, because this, I, I heard y'all talking about it, but I don't know if 250 fair, he run the buses, you know, and, and we got other people that have got deals, and that wouldn't be fair to them, but I think Mr. Obam, how he came up with that 175, they should do that and come to, and come to us and tell us, you know, and, and give them suggestions instead of we going to them. And 250 might be enough, it might not be enough because it's going, but I think the transportation department should, should handle that and come back to us. And then, you know, we look at it and make the changes, not just, because I, I never heard about it. I, right. You know, like 250, that's just new to me. Well, I, I agree that's with you, Mr. Lagord. Um, and that's why I had mentioned that we looked into it. I mean, had y'all checked with all the, so that's a figure y'all had come up yeah. with, that's including transportation. Okay. Well, it's just something that Question. we're coming up with now. That's what, the, you know, we mentioned it last at the committee meeting, that increasing it, and it was brought up. But we hadn't come up with a figure, so after doing some research, that is the recommended amount. I didn't receive no research. Nobody emailed me anything. Okay. And, and, uh, uh, Mr. Gore, you're right, the other option is to put it through policy next this coming month. Bring it up to July, but Mr. Dehart's requesting it to me. 
these right. two will be on dial 75, and everybody after that would get the higher rate. So okay. to make it more consistent, you either do it now or just wait till later. And have right. different groups on different rates. Okay. That's what we have to look at. Mr. Um, Harding. Yeah, to kind of piggyback what Mr. Mr. Gar stated. I mean, and I think <clears throat> I'm hearing Bubba saying this. I mean, these figures came up from transportation. That's how we got the figures? Uh, yeah, he's he's involved in that. Yeah. No. Eight, eight miles per gallon is about what we get for a bus. So this would be about a break even, so to speak, figure. $2.50 at the price of diesel. Okay. Considering so the maintenance and all the other aspects of what it costs. There. Okay, the only thing that I would say contrary to that, I think if, if we know this was going to be a, and I guess maybe you didn't know it was going to be an issue, Maybe he should have been here himself where he can kind of more like explain to the board exactly, you know, out, out the horse's mouth, not second hand. That's all. Okay. Mr. Hamner? Do you have a question? <laughs> okay. Mr. Uh, Behart? Oh, I'm sorry. No. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so are we, are we just going to change it to $2.50 on this motion only and then change policy later or are we changing policy tonight? I am asking you. I want to do it right, and that's the correct way to do it, Mr. Short. His motion is to waive the current policy. Yeah. But we're doing it the correct way. Robert's rules in the correct So the substitute motion is, is that he's saying that he would waive the policy on this particular one. And whether you change the policy or not, that But we're not just waiving the dollar seventy-five. We're increasing it to two fifty. You have to waive the policy and increase both. That's what I'm asking, and that's that's the proper way to do it. I think that's his motion. Yes. Yes. And there, there's no right or wrong. Okay. I guess I guess I didn't understand. Yes. Yeah, his motion would waive the current policy, which you would have to do to get around yeah. the seventy-five, and then you could set it. So, Mr. DeHart, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Mr. We're good? For, for, I mean, we still have some discussion about board members. Mr. DeHart? Well, I'd just like to clarify a couple of comments that was made that I want to put it straight what my intent is. After reading the packet, I was absent at the committee because I have no means to get here because of my injury. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that all of us have always had the opportunity to check with staff. What I've presently done, and by saying waive policy, we're not trying to change policy. That needs to go through the committee. I believe in that process. So what I'm saying, by asking us to waive the policy tonight, we have two different motions tonight about you know rental of buses. And to cover that, I had asked the current superintendent and the interim superintendent because you know, and I respect the supervisor of transportation, but I knew that this policy was in the books. It is a policy. So to do it the proper way, to be fair with everyone that's going to utilize our services of buses, or, you know, using our buses, that if we waive this policy tonight, it's temporarily until the superintendent elect or the super current superintendent, we don't have another board meeting, so it'd probably be Mr. Angeron. I spoke to both of them. And like I say, Mr. Obear is the supervisor of transportation. But guess what? The buck stops with the superintendent. Or the recommendation changed or the recommendation to the board. That's when we got to hold the superintendent's feet to the fire and say, were well, we trying to rectify something that is a problem? And I think this is the, the, the most reasonable way to do it without changing policy. Why it's not discussed, and that way Mr. Obear and everybody, the staff, is going to have say so. Ms. Becky Bros can be able to tell us about, you know, the, the numbers and stuff like that, about what it costs, you know, how many miles per gallon and all of that stuff. That's, that's for the future. But tonight, I'm just asking the board to can really consider to, I'm just saying, to allow us to waive policy just for tonight under, they have two motions. I mean, two different ones, but we're handling one right now. Right. So I just wanted to clarify that. I didn't do that just on my thoughts. I came to the superintendent and, and Mr. Angeron right. and asked for their thoughts. 
and this is what I came up with both with a gentleman and I'm not trying to speak for him mm -hmm. and he, he's here right now he can tell you I didn't influence his decision he understood and we come to a, a, what we thought was a compromise because if you want to change policy you should go through the problem we have gone through yeah. the committees right. and okay. I'm just saying I'm not trying to circumvent the, pol the committee right. uh, you know process okay? okay thank you mr. Ford okay so to, to clarify I think you guys are all on the right track here but this is strictly for these two agenda Oops. items so yes at some point in time we do need to come back to policy committee and rewrite or re-implement a new policy now when this policy was written uh, which I didn't go back and look at the date but I can tell you over the last six years the the highest gas prices on average uh, prior to this year was two dollars and fifty cents today the average price is four dollars and forty cents nationwide that's no. a 1.76 percent no, increase so that's 76 percent higher today than it was a year ago now if we look at the numbers that we're going strictly off of these two proposal items going from a dollar 75 to two dollars and fifty cents that's only a 42 percent increase so we're actually doing them a favor and we're just breaking even so I think in the essence of time this is a good idea to do this tonight but we need to immediately come back and revisit Commit. this in policy so I support the increase tonight but we definitely need to start talking about a better way to to have this set up to where we do include those inflationary costs and whatnot. thank you thank you Ms. Ford anyone else I, yes, Ms. So uh, the way I'm understanding is that the um, Gulf Coast Social Services needs the buses by June 14th. Yes. So we really don't have time to wait on this. No. So this needs to be changed tonight for these the two waiver particular needs to be accepted right, tonight recommendations. In order for them to use it, and right. and then also add that increase of 250. Is that, Mr. Dehart? Is that what you? That's what the superintendent suggested. Uh, that wasn't part of my motion, but I have no problem if y'all accept that. Okay. Order the motion. Um, okay. I'm yielding to the superintendent. That's what I needed to know. If the okay. 250 was also included in that. Right. So, if I understand correctly, I believe we wanted to keep everything like it is, but change it to a recommendation for tonight of 250 per gallon. And a waiver. And a waiver. Waiver. And waiver. 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 waiver of the policy. And waive the policy. Right. And set a price of 250. Until we come back to committee to change it in policy, if right. we need to. Yes. Okay. So we vote on the. So we're. We're voting on a substitute motion to change it to 250 for tonight in this particular one, and then we're gonna have to address the next one. Yes. So where am I now? <laughs> can you do that? Let's see if we can handle. All right. The committee recommends that the board enter into a bus lease agreement between Gulf Coast Social Services and Terrebonne Parish School Board effective June 14, 2022 to July 26, 2022 to provide bus usage for Gulf Coast Services Le Cirque Summer Camp provided buses shall run during normal operating hours on weekdays as needed mileage re waive current policy for mileage reimbursement to an adjusted rate of $2.50 per mile driven, provide and pay bus drivers approved by Terrebonne Parish School Board, provided all necessary insurance requirements are met, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. Correct. Very good. So motion to move that, right? This is substitute. Yeah. Okay, then motion Sorry, second. Second. Uh, Ms. Benoit. I already seconded that a long time ago. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay, so vote. All right. <laughs> So we go straight public to vote. Public. Okay, public comment. I was going that process, but y'all confused me. Public comment, then go back to the motion. Person, the second. Okay. Any other board members? Any objections? Now we get to vote on it. What we're doing? We're doing a roll call vote. No, we just passed the motion. Oh, and, oh, there was no obje objections. We just have to have no objections. Okay. Golly. So one objection. Then we don't need a roll call vote, then, right? If it's one objection. Do we? I'm good. Come no. on. Yeah. 
All right. Whew. So therefore, in this particular case, that motion has passed. Mr. Lagarde, you objected to the substitute motion. Thank you. We good? <laughs> all right. We got to do it all over again. You all ready? <laughs> but I think we got the wording right. Okay. Recommendation number two. The committee recommends that the board into a bus lease agreement, and I got to read it as it is. Then we got to change it, right? If if we, that's what we're doing. Okay, the current motion. That's correct. Uh, into a bus lease agreement between Terrebonne 4-H and Terrebonne Parish School Board, effective June 21, 2022, to June 24, 2022, to provide bus usage for the Discovery Center's youth program. Provided buses shall run during normal operating hours on weekdays as needed. Mileage reimbursement at a rate of $1.75 per mile driven provide and pay bus drivers approved by Terrebonne Parish School Board provided all necessary insurance requirements are met and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining there too. So the motion, we got a motion. I'll, I'll yeah. do a substitute motion. Substitute motion, yeah. okay. Uh, that no, basically says the same language. You have to yeah. move this motion. Okay, so let's move the current right. motion. Moved okay. by Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ford. Do second. We have second by Mr. Hamner. Any public comments? Now you go, Rod. And then we go back to the board. Or back to Mr. Mr. Ford and Mr. Okay, all right, go ahead. <laughs> you have to let the person that made the original motion speak if the public want to speak. And then the second. I did public. Mr. Ford? Yes. Mr. Hamner? We have a substitute motion, then I would like to offer. Okay, go ahead. Um, so the substitute motion basically is the same yeah. language You're with supposed to let me talk then ask the other members. Well, I, I did. did. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Mr. Hammer. Yeah. No, I, okay. I pass. Now you call on the other board. I know members. that. I know that. Okay. Ms. Benoit now. I did ask. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> this substitute motion would include the same language that we have in the original motion with the uh, substituting the waiver of the current policy and the rate of mileage to be at 250. That is it. Okay. And I'll second. Seconded by Mr. DeHart. Okay. Any public comments? Um, Ms. Benoit? <clears throat> Mr. No. DeHart? Not at this time. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any other board members? Yes, Mr. Ford. <clears throat> Let's make it complicated. I just want to make it <laughs> make it known that this is what we're doing for this situation. But those yes. of you that are here with either of these organizations, if if you're going to struggle to make these payments to pay that amount, come and see me offline, and, and I'm going to see if I can find some reimbursement for you from someone in the community because we all want to see these children go to these programs. We just have to cover our costs. As a school district, we have to be good stewards for the people. So we're doing what's necessary, but there are resources and people out there that want to see them get to where they need to go. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Any other board members? Any objections to the substitute motion? Uh, note that Mr. Lagarde has objected. Anyone else? <clears throat> so the substitute motion passes. Recommendation number three. <clears throat> the, re the committee recommends that the board renew the agreement. <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> Horse tonight. Between the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government Head Start Program and Terrebonne Parish School Board for the preparation of meals at Legion Park Elementary, Shriver Elementary, Gibson Elementary, and South Down Elementary Schools, cooking sites for the 2022 2023 school year, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved. So moved, Mr. Hamner. Second, Ms. Sole. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner? No comment. Ms. Sole? Uh, any other board members? Yes, Mr. DeHart? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask Ms. Powell to come up to the mic, please. Ms. Powell? Good afternoon, Ms. Powell. Good afternoon. You probably can get ready to say the comment that I'm yes, getting ready sir. to make, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to save that, that for you later. I'm okay. Diane Powell. I yeah. all of a sudden lost, forgot where I live. 614 Canal <laughs> Drive. Sorry. I'm the Head Start Administrator. Okay. I'm lady. <laughs> I've sit on this board for many years. Yes, sir. And I bring up the same thing every year. And I'm just frustrated to say, hey, something has to be done. 
because Terrebonne Parish, I don't believe in, in service in half of this parish. And for years and years, this is my 32nd year, for years and years, this program has been very worthy. But only the east side, of, uh, uh, I mean, the west side of town gets all of the services and we have nothing on the east side of town. I'm talking about in, 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 in our schools and stuff. We used to have a program right there on Grand Cairo Road years ago when I first got on here. And you gracefully, and I know that's not your call, but you gracefully said if you find money or you could do something, you would try and get us another site. That way children in the public school system can go on the east side of town. And I'm just saying, I just would like to say that I'm very disappointed nothing's changed in all of these years. I know funding is always a, a, a critical thing, but whenever it comes to our youth, and I'm talking about school board representatives or councilmen, whoever's got a vote on this, funding, they can find funding to give more kids these services that every other kid in the past years did benefit from. So I just wanted to say that I have to say the same thing. I can't support something that's only taking care of part of, the, part of the kids. And it's not about what school it's in. It's just put it anywhere. Have at least one site on the east side. I, I beg and ask you again, please try and, and Mr. keep working Dehart, on it. Yes. I actually have two sites on the east side. Okay. I serve 68 children on the east side. Okay, how many? Of, okay, of go ahead. Homa. Okay. And I serve 51 on the west side, okay. 17 in Gibson, and 34 in Schriever. Okay. So I'm confused, and I would like to know more about why right. you believe we're not serving the east side. And yes, sir, you have talked to me, and I would love to talk to you. Yes. Probably not yeah. right here in front of you. That's everybody. fine. That's fine. But um, go for it. but I do serve okay. the east side. And I know I need to serve more on the east side. Yeah. And, but I've always served on the east side, so that's why I'm confused that okay. you want more. I'm going to stand corrected because I, all of a sudden I read the packet, and I'm, I'm very, being very sincere with you, that the amount of students on this, they have more sites on the east side, I mean on the west side than on the east side. And all I'm trying to do is try, they got kids from all over the areas because yes, we, we got many buyers. And to have, and I'm not meaning down by the Lodge or by Grand Cayo, but we have many buyers all over yes, to where parents came, especially with the price of fuel. And, and, and like I say, I'd love to talk to you more, and I apologize for making the error I just made. Okay. But I'm just trying to say I would love to see what I can do, whether I'm on the school board or not, in the future to try and get that accomplished, because that's a great program. You get all of our kids the opportunity to go to a program like this, it's keeping them out of trouble. Yes, sir. And that's why I'm so adamantly trying to do that. And I apologize to you and everybody else about the comment I made, okay? I stand corrected, but guess what? I'm looking forward to go meeting with you, and I'm, I don't care who your supervisors are. I'd like to meet with them, too, because I, I really believe it's a great program, and I'd just like to see more. Well, I'd be happy to give you more explanation. Okay. And I good. know I've offered that to you in the past. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. But I'm going to make it happen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, 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 uh, you're welcome. Uh, any other board members? Ms. Powell, I'd like to say thank you for everything you do. Yes, sir. You're thank a you wonderful so person. We appreciate it all. Okay? Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. All right. I, I echo what Mr. Guazan just said, too. I know uh, what a great program Head Start is. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my daughter is, uh, herself is uh, in, a, in college for care and development of young children, birth to five. Shall and I give you my card, sir? <laughs> <laughs> her, I'll give you her number. How about that? Um, but uh, it, it's uh, it's such a needed program and such a worthwhile program. It, uh, people just don't realize uh, how much uh, uh, help is needed in our in our very own community, yes, right here in our backyard, for for families that have very young children. And, and thanks a lot for what you're, you're welcome, doing sir. with Head Start. Mr. DeHart, if you promise to be short. I will. <laughs> I'm not going to promise you anything, but I will be short. Ms. Powell, I'm going to tell you, I got even more stubborn and hard-headed on this issue. Yes, sir. Whenever we had COVID-19, I am gratefully saying that the school system fed many kids. That I'm not joking. Yes, sir. And it was very worthy to see the amount of students that did benefit. And that's why I'm saying enough is not enough. We need more. So. I want to say that that's why I'm pushing so hard and not giving up. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Mr. DeHart. Thank you. I appreciate All right. That. So. Go to, yeah. go to, um, okay. So, uh, any uh, objections? Hearing none. 
motion passes. Thank you again. Have a great night and a great weekend. <laughs> Recommendation number four, the committee is number four. The committee recommends that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to the Planus Design Group, APC, for plans and specifications for a roof repair replacement project at Evergreen Junior High. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds authorize the advertising of bids direct that any major project changes be reported to the building's food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved. So moved, Ms. Uh, Benoit. Second, Dr. Trahan. Yes, sir. <laughs> Any um, public comments? I think we have Mr. Uh, you, would you like to come speak any for any of this or no. nothing? Okay, good. So, Miss, uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to say good. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> All right, keep it on, Miss Benoit. No, sir. Dr. Trump. No, sir. Any other board members? <laughs> All right. Um, any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. I apologize, people. Recommendation number five. The, re the committee recommends that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to Duplantis Design Group APC for plans and specifications for a roof repair replacement pro project at Oaklawn Middle School. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds. Authorize the advertising of bids. Direct that many, any major projects changes to be reported to the building's food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids. And further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved. So moved, Dr. Traha. Second. Second, Ms. Soleil. Any public comments? Dr. Traha. I'm just so glad that the roof at Oakland is going to be attended to. Is in dire need. Absolute. Amen. Ms. Uh, Soleil. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number six. The committee recommends that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to orchestrate LLC for plans and specifications for a roof repair replacement project at Lacash Middle School. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds authorize the advertising of bids. Direct that any major project changes be reported to the building's food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved, moved by Dr. Traha, second by Ms. Benoit. Any public comments? Dr. Traha. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm overjoyed that these two rules are being uh, repaired at this point. Absolutely. And Ms. Benoit, any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number seven. <clears throat> the committee recommends that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to orchestrate LLC for plans and specifications for a roof repair replacement project at Legion Park Elementary School. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds. Authorize the building, the advertising of bids. Direct that any major Project changes be reported to the building's food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining there. So moved. So moved, Mr. Hammer. Second, Ms. Sole. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner. No comment. Ms. Sole. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number eight, the committee recommends that the board issue a notice to proceed as, a, as per contractual agreement to orchestrate LLC for plans and specifications for a roof repair replacement project at Acadian, Acadian Elementary School. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds. Authorize the advertising of bids. Direct that any major project changes be reported to the building's food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids. And further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move, Ms. Soleil. Second. Second, um, Ms. Benoit. Any public comments? Ms. Soleil. Ms. Benoit. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none. Motion passes. Recommendation number <coughs> nine. The committee recommends that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to Sheremy and Bruce Architects APC for plans and specifications for a classroom addition to building Ilm at Lewis Miller Terrebonne Career and Technical High School to replace the damaged portable building. 
funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds authorize advertising of bids direct that any major project changes be reported to the building's food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents so pertaining there too so move mr dehart second second mr hamner any public comments um then uh no. mr dehart no comment. mr hamner I have a question, but I'm going to save it for later. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any board members? Uh, any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you, guys. Uh, recommendation number 10, the committee recommends that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to Sheremy and Bruce Architects, APC, for plans and specifications for the purchase of an eight-classroom modular building for Broadmoor Elementary School and a 10 classroom modular building for Berg Elementary School, including demolition of damaged modular and portable buildings and site preparation funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds, authorized advertising of bids, direct that any major project changes be reported to the buildings, food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move Ms. Sole, second Ms. Benoit. Any public comments? Ms. Sole, Ms. Benoit? Yes. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number 11. The committee recommends that the board approve a change in funding source for the Terrebonne High School HVAC upgrade project from ESSER 3 to the building fund and establish a budget of $3,282,772 in the so building moved. fund. So move Mr. Hamner, second Mr. Ford. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner, Mr. Ford. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number 12, the committee recommends that the board authorize the purchase department to advertise for requests for qualifications for engineering services for HL Bourgeois High School HVAC project funds to be derived from ESSER three funds. So move Mr. Hamner. Second, Second Ms. Sole. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner. No comment. Ms. Sole. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number 13, the committee recommends that the board authorize a renewal of the kitchen hood inspection contract with SafeWorks Safety Solutions, LLC, 195 Corporate Drive, Homa, Louisiana, 70360, at the current rates for a 12-month period from July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2023, under the same terms and conditions <coughs> upon, upon mutual agreement between Terrebonne Parish um, School Board and Safe Work so Safety moved. Solutions. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Hamner, seconded by Mr. DeHart. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner? Uh, no comment. Mr. DeHart? No comment. Any other uh, board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number 14. The committee recommends that the board authorize a renewal of the fire extinguisher contract with Safe Work Safety Solutions LLC 195 Corporate Drive, Homa, Louisiana, 70360, at the current rates for a 12 month period from July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2023, under the same terms and conditions upon mutual agreement between Terrebonne Parish School Board and Safe Work Safety Solutions. Second. I'll, I'll so move, Mr. DeHart. Second. Second, Mr. Hamner. Any public comments? Mr. DeHart? No, sir. Thank Mr. Hamner? None. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number 15, the committee recommends that the board renew the contracts for kitchen equipment repairs service section one and refrigeration repair services section two from the following vendors for a period of 12 months, July 1st, 2022 through June 30, 2023, upon mutual agreement of both Terrebonne Parish School Board and the awarded vendor under the same terms and conditions and the two sections, the vendors are listed below. So move Ms. Sole, second, I'll second. Mr. Hamner, any public comments? Ms. Sole, Mr. Hamner, any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number 16, the, the committee recommends that the board accept the lowest bids received meeting all specifications for the following maintenance and repair services 
for the 2022-2023 school year and allowed the purchasing department to re-advertise those sections where no bid was received. So moved. Second. So moved, Mr. Hamner. Second, Mr. Dehart. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner? You want to read the whole list? Uh, absolutely no. Okay. You can look at that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dehart? No, sir. No Any problem. other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. I'm busy. <laughs> Do it good, Dang. Do it I'm good. almost there, almost there, right? Bear with this guy. Recommendation number 17. The committee recommends that the board accept the lowest bids received, meaning all specifications for the following maintenance supplies and equipment for the 2022-2023 school year and allow the purchasing department to re-advertise those sections where no bid was received. So I move Ms. Soleil. Second. Second, Mr. Hamner. Any public comments? Ms. Soleil, Mr. Hamner. Other board members, Mr. Dehart. At this time, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer a substitute motion and I'd like Ms. Ms. Dugas to come to the mic and explain there's been one change in it. It's the reason I'm asking for a substitute motion at the request of staff. Thank you, Mr. Dehart. Yes, Ms. Um, Ms. Dugas, please. Ms. Dugas. Like the green shirt. <laughs> Go Gators. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey. Um, the only change is the miscellaneous custodial supply bid. Um, after further evaluation and board attorney review, um, it was decided that the lowest bidder was not re non responsive and um, we awarded it to the second lowest bidder. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you for all your hard work on that. Appreciate it. Uh, any other board members? What would I need to do? The motion was by Mr. Dehart. We needed a, a second. Oh, okay. So the um, second substitute motion by Mr. Dehart, second Miss Benoit. Any public comments, Mr. Dehart? No, no comment. Miss Benoit. Any other board members? So then uh, the substitute motion, adding that new vendor, is the um, the moved motion, right? Yes. Accepted. Any any objections? Thank you. Right. Keep me straight. Yeah. We only got 20 more to go, guys. Uh, actually, it's the last one. The uh, recommendation number 18, the committee recommends that the board declare property located at, I think I'm going to read slow, 1, 2, 3, six, no, Highway 665, Montague, Louisiana, 70377, Pony Shan Elementary School as surplus and authorize the superintendent to have the building and property appraised. Moved by Ms. Benoit, second by Ms. Soleil. Um, any public comments? Ms. Benoit. No, sir. Ms. Soleil. Any other board members? Mr. Ford. Is the appraisal going to be paid for by us? Good question. I don't know. Um, the superintendent, that was Mr. Martin. I'm assuming yes. Okay. I have a question. Okay. Why are we even having it appraised when we've already gotten rid of it? Well, it hasn't gone. We haven't gotten rid of it. We haven't gone through well, the process. Well, but we yet. already. We can't discuss that. Uh, okay. That's okay. still open. We can't discuss that, but this is a necessary step to take the action. Okay. That, that's all I needed. Okay. To know that it's a necessary okay. step to take the action needed. Okay. Thank you. We're good. Any other board members? So I had a follow-up oh, question. Okay, go yeah. ahead. So my follow-up question is, <laughs> assuming we're going to absorb the cost of the appraisal, if we decide to sell it, can we include that cost in the sale? Well, I think the, uh, can we discuss that or no? I don't think that'll fly. No. I think that we have to follow the Okay, and that's, a, that's normally the thing that we do as far as any incurred cost we can recoup through the sale <laughs> if we sell the property. No, well, there's a specific statute on how to sell the property, so if you're going to sell it, it has to be approved by the board. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's, what, that's basically what the question was. Okay. Thank you. Mr. DeHart. We can't discuss and ask questions about any of this because we were in executive session for the previous thing. So what I'm saying is that regardless if you agree or disagree, uh, I just find this strange. But right. guess what? It's what it is. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ford. I won't be long, but this, okay. this is not 
this is not involving what we discussed in executive session. All this is involving is this motion to to uh, identify it as surplus. Yep. So any property that becomes surplus can have a brief discussion on appraisal and subsequent sale. It was very general. I didn't get into specifics. Thank you. Thank you. We're good. Thank We're you. good. Any other board members? Any objections? I object. Okay. Uh, note that Mr. Hamner objects to recommendation number 18. Any other objections? Motion passes. Um, there being no further business to come before the Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee, the meeting was adjourned at 6.22. I turn it over to you, Mr. Harding. Thank you, Mr. Vise. I would love to be finance, insurance, and section 16 land committee. Uh, Ms. Clyde Hamner. The Finance, Insurance, and Section 16 Lands Committee met immediately following the 5 p.m. special school board meeting in the Building Food Service and Transportation Committee meeting on Tuesday, May 17, 2022, in the boardroom of the school board office with the following members present, myself, the chairman, Mr. Mike Lagarde, vice chairman, and Ms. Stacy Sole, committee member. Also in attendance were Mr. Greg Harding, Mr. Dane Boisin, Ms. Debbie Benoit, Mr. Matt Ford, Superintendent-elect Bubba Orangeron, and members of the staff. All right, the meeting was called to order. Uh, Mr. Lynn Fontaine, Senior Vice President of Hub International, presented information on the group health claims. Uh, Mr. Curtis Constranza, Risk Manager, presented information from the Insurance Advisory Committee meeting. And Mr. Constranza addressed the committee regarding renewal of student accident insurance. Um, recommendation number one, the committee recommends that the board accept the proposal from Mark Harris, agent of record, underwritten by Mutual of Omaha for student accident insurance, including volunteer workers with limits of 25,000 per accident and catastrophic athletic accident insurance, underwritten by Zurich Insurance Company with limits of $1 million, effective August 1st, 2022, with an annual premium in the amount of 182,000 Six hundred fifty-one dollars. So moved. Moved by Mr. Dehart, seconded by Miss. Uh, was that Miss Soleil? Yes. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any members of the public wish to address this motion? Mr. Dehart. No, sir. Miss Soleil. Any members of the board? Hearing any objection? Hearing none. The motion passes. Recommendation number two: The committee recommends that the board accept the proposal from Travelers Casualty Insurance Company, USI Broker of Record, for crime insurance with limits of $100,000 with additional limits of $150,000 on, on key personnel subject to a $1,000 deductible effective July 1st, 2022 with an annual premium in the amount of $7,835, guaranteed for three years. So moved. moved by Mr. Dehart, seconded by uh, Ms. Soleil. Uh, um, any members of the public wish to address this motion? Mr. Dehart? The only comment is the positive and having guaranteed for three years is a plus. Yes, sir, thank opinion. you. Uh, and Ms. Soleil, any other member of the board? Uh, any objection to the motion? Hearing no objection, the motion passes. Recommendation number three, the committee recommends that the board accept the renewal offer for excess casualty insurance, <coughs> excuse me, from Lloyd's of London, the Brit Group, author Jay Gallagher of Louisiana Incorporated uh, is the broker of record covering automobile liability, general liability, errors and omissions liability and sexual abuse harassment liability with limits of $1 million per occurrence with a $3 million general aggregate limit for general liability, $1 million per accident for auto and $1 million per claim for errors and omissions and sexual abuse harassment liability subject to $300,000 self-insured retention with an annual premium of $215,991, uh, 
rejecting uninsured, underinsured motorist liability and terrorism effective July 1st, 2022 through July 1st, 2023 and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. Okay. Moved by Ms. Sole, Second. seconded by Ms. Uh, Traha. Any members of the public wish to address this motion? Ms. Sole? <laughs> no. Ms. Traha? Uh, any other members of the board? Uh, any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. The committee recommends, this is recommendation four, the committee recommends that the board accept the renewal offer for boiler and machinery insurance from Travelers Insurance Company, Arthur Gallagher of Louisiana as the broker, with an annual premium of $12,217, subject to a $2,500 deductible effective July 1st, 2022, through July 1st, 2023. Moved by Mr. Voisin. Second. Second by Mr. Lagarde. Any members of the public wish to address this motion? Mr. Voisin? Yes, Mr. Lagarde? No, sir. Any other members of the board? Uh, any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. Recommendation number five. The committee recommends that the board accept the proposals for excess workers' compensation insurance from Midwest Employers Casualty USI Insurance Services broker of record with a $500,000 $500, self-insured retention effective July 1st, 2022 through July 1st, 2024 with a minimum annual premium in the amount of $99,715. Moved by Ms. Sole, Second. seconded by Mr. Lagarde. Any members of the public wish to address this? Ms. Sole? Mr. Lagarde? Uh, any uh, member of the board have any questions or comments? I, I have a question, Curtis. Is Curtis here? Uh, it kind of threw me, I just caught this. Why does it say minimum annual premium instead of the maximum annual premium? The premium is based on our uh, annual salary for all our employees mm -hmm. and there is adjustment made at a certain time of the year okay. where we look to see if our, in, our salary increase or not and if it did increase then the premium would adjust accordingly so would so that 99,000 could go up could go up if significantly our, or I wouldn't say it ever go, has gone up significantly it has changed by a few thousand but that was because more people were hired or our, uh, we might have given a raise to our employees. Right. So since the premium is, is, is based on our salary, if the salary range for the entire district goes up, then this premium could go up. But it's not never been something that was been okay. a drastic number. Thank you. All right, any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. <laughs> Recommendation number six, the committee recommends that the board authorize the renewal of flood insurance with Lede Agency through Wright National Flood Insurance Company effective July 1st, 2022, with an estimated annual premium in the amount of $153,356. So moved. moved by Mr. Dehart, seconded by Ms. Sole. Any members of the public wish to address this motion? Mr. Dehart? No, sir. Ms. Sole? Any other members of the board? Any objection to the motion? Hearing no objection, the motion passes. Recommendation number seven, the committee recommends that the board accept the renewal for cyber liability insurance from Houston Casualty USI Insurance Services with an annual premium of $53,428, subject to a $100,000 deductible with limits of one million, effective July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Moved by Mr. Voisin. Second. Second by Mr. Lagarde. Any members of the public wish to address this motion? Mr. Voisin? Mr. Lagarde? No, sir. Any other members of the board? Any objection to the motion? I object. Okay. Um, please, please let it be noted that Ms. Benoit objects to this. Um, 
and the motion passes. Recommendation number eight, the committee recommends that the board select the courier to serve as the official journal for the Terrebonne Parish School Board at the current rates from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Moved by Mr. Voisin. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lagarde. Any members of the public wish to address this motion? Mr. Voisin? Uh, Mr. Lagarde? No, sir. Uh, any other members of the board? Yes, sir. Mr. Ford. No, me. Yeah, uh, Mr. Need, Dehart. Uh, Mr. Chairman, either you or Ms. Dugas can answer this because yeah, I know she handles it. Is there any other uh, choices besides the Hummer Courier? I've been informed, no, Ms. Dugas, you want to? This, this, is, it's, this is the official journal because it's, a, uh, it's the only written newspaper that we have around here, right? Is that why we use them? I thought they had an, another newspaper. Quick quarter. Quick, well, quick quarter. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what I'm saying is that hardly nobody gets this circulation anymore and you gotta do it on the website and all of that. But that, I, I just don't, I don't think <coughs> they didn't know the bang for the buck. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ford. Thank you. Yeah, just to follow up with, with Roger Dale said, I know we, we kind of discussed it briefly in committee, but the Home and Daily Courier is the only paper that has the readership currently at this time. Homa Times is working diligently to try to build their readership, but at the same time they're building theirs, Homa Daily Courier is losing significant readership. So there may be some time soon here in the future, I hope, and I don't mind coming on record to say that because they have not done anything to cover what we're doing here nope. as the uh, media of record. So you're right, Mr. Dehart, but right now we're just not quite there yet. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Uh, any objection to the motion? I object. Mr. Dehart and Mr. Ford object. The motion passes. A recommendation number nine. The committee recommends that the board authorize the renewal of ink and toner cartridges contract with the Treehouse P.O. Box 413 Norwood, uh, Massachusetts at the current rate for a 12-month period beginning July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023 under the same terms and conditions and upon mutual agreement between Terrebonne Parish School Board and the Treehouse. Moved by Ms. Soleil. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lagarde. Any members of the public wish to address this motion? Ms. Soleil, Mr. Lagarde, yes, any other members of the board? Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. Recommendation number 10, the committee recommends that the board authorize the renewal of the office supply catalog contract with Steyer Office World, 1060 West Tunnel Boulevard, Homa, Louisiana, at the current rate for a 12-month period from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023, under the same terms and conditions, and upon mutual agreement between Terrebonne Parish School Board and Steyer Office World. So moved. Uh, moved by Ms. Traha, seconded by Ms. Soleil. Any members of the public wish to address this recommendation? Ms. Traha? No, sir. Ms. Soleil, any other members of the board? Mr. Ford. I just want to make it known that Steyer has maintained the same contract with us, even in spite of the increase in the inflation that we're experiencing. So I want to show appreciation to them because they're really, you know, pushing for this terrible parish school district. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Um, any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. Recommendation number 11, the committee recommends that the board approve the renewal of a campsite lease at campsite lot A on the left descending bank of Miners Canal in section 16, township 19 south, range 16 east, that's right near Lake Decad, with Lance Schwest for a period of 10 years beginning July 3rd, 2022 through July 3rd, 2032 with an annual lease of $500 and further authorized board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining there too. Come on. Moved by Mr. Dehart. Come on. Second by Mr. Voisin. Uh, any members of the public wish to address this motion? Uh, Mr. Dehart. No, no comment. Mr. Voisin. Any other members of the board? Uh, any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. Uh, Ms. Bro, Chief Financial Officer, presented information on the monthly budget to actual comparison report and update on sales tax collections report. 
Uh, there being no further business to come before the Finance Insurance Section 16 Lands Committee, the meeting was adjourned at 7.18 p.m. Uh, Ms. No, Benoit. I, I call for you to read all the other Would uh, you like me to read? What, okay. Uh, the topic regarding classification or reclassification of one of two existing child welfare and attendance position as directed by child welfare and attendance with permission to advertise directive child welfare and attention position was presented. Motion was offered by Mr. Lagarde, but motion failed to carry due to lack of a second. Okay, the so topic so regarding- uh, Point of personal privilege. Uh, Mr. Ford. Uh, sub subsidiary, I think Ms. Benoit has a motion she'd like to make, and then I have a follow-up motion after that as well. So Ms. Benoit, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, I recommend that the board approve as presented in the committee on May 17th, 2022, um, the reclassification of one of the two existing child welfare and attendance positions as director of child welfare and attendance with permission to advertise the director of child welfare and attendance position. Um, as, as presented, right. right. Second. We have a motion and second. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Um, you want to speak to it, Ms. Dumas? Well, I, I just want to speak to the fact that... Wait, wait, public first. Any members of public wish to address the motion? Uh, Ms. Benoit. Yeah, I, I just would like to speak to the fact that um, at, it, during committee, I didn't have a chance to, to vote on this, and I think that it was important to bring it to the full board. Um, I want to support the new superintendent in his... Um, his vision for uh, reorganizing some of the positions here at the central office. Thank you, Ms. Benoit. Mr. Ford. Actually, Dr. Tron seconded it, and I'll talk about it. Oh, okay. This. I'm sorry. I thought it was you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Uh, after much research and speaking uh, to Sandoval and speaking to Mr. Martin and uh, the new uh, superintendent and uh, doing the research with Robert's rules, since uh, this topic was not voted upon, it is open to be brought back also because it is on today's agenda. Second point that it's able to be brought back. Uh, it's uh, the uh, information on renewal, which covers that, is in chapter 10, paragraph two of Robert's Rules, uh, revised, rev revised ed edition uh, 11. Uh, it's in the agenda. Now that it has been discharged by the committee, it is now back in the hands of the full board. Uh, also custom in previous boards, I don't remember this being done in this board, but previous boards have done that in this uh, procedure in several times. So I just wanted to make clarify where we stand as far as the rules and regulations on this yeah. procedure. Thank you, Mr. Ohan. I, I don't think anybody's question in the legality of bringing it back up though. Uh, but thank you for that clarification. Mr. Ford. Um, just real quick, I do support this and I think that we need to hear from the full board and not just the committee. So I'd like to call for a roll call vote. Well, uh, well I'm, we, may, we may have other people want to. Yeah, after, after that. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Uh, I, I just have a quick question. Mr. Armstrong, what's your intent, since you didn't get to speak on it uh, two weeks ago, what's your intent with these two posi this position? Okay, this one. <clears throat> so the, the, the purpose is one of streamlining the process of me delegating and reporting to me. By creating these positions, these four positions, I'll have academics covered with chief academic officer. I'll have finance covered with our chief financial officer. I'll have student issues covered with this position we're talking about now, which is director of child welfare and attendance. And I'll have, if the second one gets discussed and approved, I'll have HR director covered, which is personnel. Those are the four main components of, of running a school system. I'm trying to streamline this back and forth reporting so that it, it's, it flows very well. That's the main objective of, of this. And the second part, um, a big portion of what the assistant superintendent did has now been transferred over to the chief academic officer, which is gonna look differently. 
that position, what Ms. LaRose is doing, is going to be exclusively almost academic. So a lot of the things that the assistant superintendent did are going to be redistributed, these jobs and duties, to these two positions that I'm requesting. So it's more responsibility, therefore a bigger, higher title. That's the main objective of what I'm trying to accomplish. Thank you. Any uh, questions for Mr. Augereau? Mr. Uh, Lagarde. So that position would be over the supervisor currently now. It would be over. You would have a director and a supervisor, right? Yes. yes and then that supervisor would have an attorney as well, right? To help them out in that field. That, that, would, that would be on the HR side. On yes, the sir. HR side, yes, they sir. have their own separate right. attorney, not the attorney we use now. It will be another attorney that you going to hire to work with human resource and I don't think that that's an additional cost because we don't spend that well, much that's, that's, money that's, that's in the thing with our agreement but we're going to have a separate attorney I didn't, I didn't like that and I don't see what's wrong with how we have it now now if you don't change people but then you know I just don't like the good old boy politics I'm sorry I just don't like the part we're going to take other people and put over other people and we're going to bring other people in. We're going to have distinction in the office. Now, I understand where people have to work with people and have to be comfortable with people, but you may be comfortable, but you have a lot of other people not comfortable with both of these positions. You know, and, and the talk is out there. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. I might be out of order. Everybody know who getting what job when, you know, and uh, I just don't like that. You know, and the first, then I don't think we need it. You know, we're going to spend additional money on, on stuff, you know. I don't think human resource director had an attorney just for human resource in all the years of the board, and now they're going to have an attorney. Somebody's going to think that's a personal favor. I know I would. And then you know who the attorney gonna be. You know, it, it's just a lot of it. And then I don't think we all was told the same things in the meetings. Everybody came out with something a little different. You know, everybody didn't have the same opportunity to be told A. Hey. And you know, and I just think a lot of backroom dealings are going on that I do not like. But I don't think we, we, we need that. We gotta supervisor of human resource for the last 20, 30 years. We've been doing it that way. So now we're going to get somebody new over that person, and then you're going to take CWA, which two people are equal, and you're going to make somebody over somebody. What's, what's the point of somebody got to be over somebody? Why they can't work together as they're working? And then you're going to take other supervisors. We get the calls. I get the calls that are or upset that we was equal, now you're over, man. And then it's like, you shielding yourself from everybody. You just gonna talk to the poor people. So that mainstream gonna cost us money because a director not gonna work for what a supervisor get. It gonna cost more money. We gonna hire that attorney that gonna cost more money. But the most thing I think is gonna cause conflict within the system. You know, we gonna be top heavy. And then people who want to apply for the jobs, principals in different men. We know who's getting jobs. You're wasting your time. I don't think it's fair. I, I really don't. It's, it's what I've fought for and continue to fight for is a network of getting rid of that, of getting people the opportunity, you know. But that's my opinion, and I'm one person. But I'm one person who's going to make a lot of noise. And I'm one person who's not going to let it go down like that. But I'm just one vote. But I'm more than one vote. But, you know, I, I just think it's, it's too much. I just not, I'm going to support you with your endeavors. But if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're wrong. I just, from what I done heard and what we done discussed, I don't like it. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Lagarde. Uh, 
some good valid comments. Uh, Ms. Trahan, you up next. Uh, just one comment. If we're going to be hiring another uh, firm or council for any purpose, I think it needs to come through the, the no school. No doubt, no doubt. The board needs to vote on that. That's that, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you asked that because that's um, I was going to ask that if you uh, are, are you making a recommendation on the school law attorney as you have it written here in, in no. here or no. uh, you, no. that's coming later or if at all uh, if at all all right and what about our current uh, lawyer there would be it would be somebody different for particular school law things perhaps yes perhaps the point of order needed. here, That's really uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. No, I'm the chairman. I call point of order. No, but you can, you can, all right, can go ahead. Just My, call it. Well, Thanks. point of order is that we're getting to, we're discussing two different uh, motions here. Right. The only motion that I made was regarding the director of child welfare and attendance, period. We didn't talk about attorneys. We didn't talk about uh, HR that kind of got into the conversation but it it has nothing to do with what my recommendation is it's only you know you're 100 percent right we're talking about the human resources one and we should be talking about the director right. of child welfare only attendance. the directors the only so, thing uh, pertinent i'll uh, accept your point of order but uh, uh any any questions about the director of child welfare and attendance uh position that we're currently voting on or going to vote on. Call for rule, call vote. No questions? Okay. Um, so let's clarify on the yes is what, no is what, just to make sure. This wait. would be the recommendation for yes. yes. Okay. Correct. A yes vote would be to approve the position and no vote would be not to. All right. Um, if we're doing a roll call vote, I'd like to ask Ms. Brunet to put me as a yes vote. If that's okay, okay Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's quite all right. So let's vote. Did we do proper? Yes, we did. Yes. All votes are in. Three objections, Mr. Hamner, Mrs. Sole, and Mr. Lagarde. Mr. De Mr. Dehart supporting it, voting yes. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, and I think y'all want to bring up. Uh, yes, sir. Another one. Do you want me to read it, or do I'll, you want to read it, it yourself? <clears throat> I recommend that the board approve as presented in committee on 517. 2022, the addition of the Director of Human Resources position with permission to advertise the Director of Human Resources position as presented. So move a second. I'll second. That's moved by Mr. Ford and seconded by Mr. Uh, Dehart. Yep. Any uh, public comment on the motion? Uh, Mr. Ford. Speaking strictly on this position. Terrebonne Parish is the largest employer in this parish, right? Terrebonne Parish School District is the largest employer. Uh, in conversations throughout the years, Dr. Yarbrough has made a few things very clear, one of which is Terrebonne Parish is not an employment agency. The problem we have is the director or the supervisor of personnel at this time is inundated with so many different things. Not just dealing with human resource issues, not just dealing with placement of teachers, administrators, custodians, support personnel, bus personnel, but also recruiting and retention. These are things that as the largest employer in this parish, a director needs to be there to help facilitate that, to delegate that. Now, I'm not getting into question about who this person is going to be, because quite frankly, that's not up to me. We don't get involved with personnel matters. But what we are here for is to support our superintendent. And if he says, 
hey, as the largest employer in this parish, I need some help in human resources, then that's what we do. As a board, we support them and we give them the opportunity to have this position. Now, yes, it does require an increase in pay, but it also is in conjunction with alleviating the assistant superintendent position, which was basically calling it even, right? Four positions delegated from one, those positions get an increase in salary because their role in the district and their responsibility is greater, so they should get paid more. I think we should do our part to support him and to show the people of this district that we, we are in this for the long haul. And this is basically just bringing us into the 21st century. We've been operating in the 20th century for the last 100 years. Maybe it's time to get with the program. Thank you. Mr. Lagarde. You know, I know a lot of school districts are larger than us, and you don't have those positions like that, much larger than us. You know, I thought someone Point said of was number 13. Wait, 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 wait. Please wait till you call going, please. We're talking about with more employees in the schools in the state. We number 13 in the state, and they got a lot of, so they got 12 larger than us, and a lot of them, they don't have those positions, so I don't think we that back door 100 years old for the position. You know, and yes, you do want to support the superintendent, but you got to do it right for the people. We just don't say, well, we're giving you the key and do anything. You have your constituents to support or stop making it about you, you know, and like I say, I'm tired of deals, the good old boy network, but somebody trying to get something out of it. Have you done? Roll call vote. Uh, any any other members of the board? Um, just just for the record, I I, I just want to state that uh, I don't I don't think the salary is is a big issue. Uh, last year, we if the board recalls, we we reinstituted the uh, uh, the ratios all the way up to 100%. So our supervisors are making some of the highest salaries for supervisors in the state. Um, uh, uh, I, I really, I, my objection to these two positions is that it's, it's adding a new layer of management when, when all we need to do is just rewrite our supervisor job descriptions. And, and that that would have accomplished the same thing because supervisors are there we 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 gave them a substantial raise this past year and that's that's my objection and you know we, we creating a whole new layer of management still having the supervisors okay and we're not giving a darn thing to our teachers you know our teachers are you know we, we can't even find them because our teachers are so low paid and that's that's really my my, my my hang up with these new positions. Anyway, um, the roll call was called for. Unless anybody else wants to make a comment, Miss uh, Sole. Having been a supervisor in this district, the reason I cannot support it is because I believe in team effort, and I would have a hard time with another supervisor being in charge of me especially not knowing whether that person has more experience or less experience. Well taken. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Ford. Just bringing up this again. Now this is, if you ever look at corporate structuring and you look at what a superintendent is in, in relation to this district, he is the chief executive officer, okay? Every organization has a chief executive officer and below him has his board of directors or other chiefs, even in the military. So this is a chain of command. Essentially, we're taking the number one and the number three level and knocking out that number two, right? Because for years, for decades, we had a superintendent and then assistant superintendent and then supervisors. We're knocking out that second level and we're building a staff around the superintendent. Anybody else? 
Okay. Uh, a Y means you're voting for the position. A N means you're voting against it. Got it, Mr. Voisin? All right. Ms. Brunet? Why? <laughs> MCA? <laughs> Got a chill you. All votes are in. <laughs> Two objections, Mr. Hamner and Ms. Sole. Absent, Mr. Lagarde. All right, I think uh, Mr. President, that would you are, if there being no further business to come before the Finance, Insurance, and Section 16 Lands Committee, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Yes, I am still a president unless somebody uh, cooped me out of here, so I'm still a president. <laughs> Governor C, Executive Committee, uh, Dr. Trahan. Thank you, Mr. Harding. The Executive Committee met immediately following the 5 p.m. special school board meeting, the Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee meeting, and the Finance, Insurance, and Section 16 Lands Committee meeting on Tuesday, May 17, 2022, in the boardroom of the school board office with the following members present. Mr. Harding, President. Mr. Michael Lagarde, member. <clears throat> Myself and Ms. Uh, was absent. I was a... Uh, out of state at the time. Also in attendance were Mr. Clyde Hamner, Ms. Debbie Benoit, Mr. Matthew Ford, Ms. Stacey Soleil, Mr. Dane Voisin, Superintendent Elect Bubba Algeron, and Ms. Rebecca Bro. Uh, President Harding had called the meeting to order. The executive committee examined and authorized payments of invoices for the current month, supplemental payroll, and travel expenses. Are there any uh, questions by any board members on the executive committee? Do I have a motion I, I to do. I have a quick, me. quick question. Yes, sir. Um, I don't see Ms. Bro here. She's here. She's here. She's, uh, she is. In the back. Oh, there you are in the back. Wait. Where in the, uh, the binder would we find the uh, invoices for a particular, like uh, the, the, uh, the upgrades to central office, those things? Or are they in there yet? We haven't paid any invoices yet, Mr. Hamner. Once we do, they will be included. The way that the printouts are broken down for you are by accounts payable edit. Mm -hmm. So we, each payment date um, includes all of the checks that were issued during that particular payment date so they'll be depends on when we pay them where they will be found inside the binder okay and those those are coming out of which budget those you know the I'm specifically if it's talking about upgrades in this building um, out of the general operating fund out of our general maintenance budget they would not be capital improvements that, that's a concern I have because I don't want to get in an audit uh, using the wrong fund uh, when we get audited next year. Correct. No, sir. Um, capital projects can still be paid for with the general operating fund. It's, okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, Is sir. it a, a limited amount? Um, no, sir. All right. Um, and also notice tonight that we, uh, and this, May, may seem not seem to be part of the invoices, but they are. Um, we, we authorized a number of architects, and I know you have an architect to do. We don't have to authorize the architect to do the work here. We used an architect that was already under contract with us. We but don't they normally go uh, uh, before the board for saying this is, we use it, this architect or that architect? Yes or no? No, sir. Not not for all um, things that are are regular, maybe regular maintenance or regular repairs or or things that don't exceed a, th a certain threshold. Anything that would exceed, say, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Do you know um, how much we spent so far on that project? We haven't received any invoices, so no, sir, don't. Do you have a budget for that project, Mr. Ongeron? 
will you give us a budget? Would you present a budget for that project to the uh, building committee in two weeks? Sure. Written budget? Okay, thank you. Any other board members? Do I have a motion? Move. Pass. A second. Second. Second by Mr. Ole, moved by Mr. Harding. Uh, any objections? Excuse me, public comments? Any objections? None heard so <coughs> ordered. Being no further business before the executive committee, the meeting was adjourned at 7.20 p.m. I return the meeting to you, Mr. Harding. Thank you, Dr. Trow. Item number 12, superintendent agenda. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Education Technology and Policy Committee met immediately following all the other meetings um, with I'm myself present as chair, Mr. Matthew Portis, vice chair, and Ms. Stacy Sole uh, was ad hoc for Dr. Maybell mm -hmm. Trahan. Also in attendance were Mr. Clyde Hamner, Mr. Michael Lagord, Mr. Dane Boisan, Superintendent-elect Bubba Ogeron, and members of the staff. Um, first recommendation is that the board approve live streaming of all committee meetings, regular and special, and archive the meetings on the Turbine Parish School Board website. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hamner, second by Mr. Ford. Any public comment, Mr. Hamner? Uh, no, I just think it's a good idea to keep our public informed that we're doing this. Uh, kudos to whoever made the original motion. Mr. Ford? Yeah, just. This is uh, just something that I think we need to do because most of the work is done in committee. So a lot of times we have people tuning in at the board meeting and they see very little discussion at the board meeting and they may grow concerned. If they can watch, stay abreast as far as committee, then I think that's a great idea as well. Any other board members? Yeah, I, I just one other quick comment. Uh, I encourage people though to come to the meeting, not just watch it on the website or, or Facebook or because if you have a question or a comment or concern after the meeting, it's really too late. You know, we take that vote. So if you want to get some input on something that will be voted on, go personally to the meetings. I highly encourage that. Thank you. And we, and we are having a number of people that are showing up regularly and I want to, uh, and, and that's a good thing. Thank you, Mr. Hamner. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, so moved. Uh, recommendation number two, uh, the committee recommends that the board approve as presented the interagency agreement between Terrebonne Parish School Board and Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government on behalf of the Head Start program for the 2022-23 school year and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining oh, there to we approved that early. Moved by Mr. Ford. Second, Second by Ms. Soleil. Um, any public comment? Mr. Ford? Ms. Powell, do you have anything you want to say? Oh. I appreciate your support. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I thought you would get away without having to come up here. Yes, sir, I did. <laughs> Thank you. you you're okay. just such appreci so appreciated by the board. Oh, we, you're very kind. We really... Uh, uh, I have a... a great yeah, bring working. them all up. <laughs> bring them all come up. Well, I mean, I have a great working relationship with the folks at Special Ed, with nutrition. Yes. Um, the best thing is when we don't talk to each other, that means it's going well. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. <laughs> Right, so, but everything's great. We appreciate the kind support. Head Start kids are also your kids. Yeah. So it's great to work together. Thank you, and we appreciate you. Uh, Ms. Ole, do you have any comments? Okay. Thank you. Any board members, any other comments? Okay, any objections? Hearing none, so moved. Thank you. Recommendation number three, the committee recommends that the board approve as presented revised policy file H-3.4, mandatory school uniforms. So moved. So moved. moved by Mr. Harding. Second. Second by Mr. Dehart. Any public comment? Mr. Harding? Mr. Dehart? No, ma'am. Okay, any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, so moved. Recommendation number four, the committee recommends that the board approve as presented the adjusted makeup days on the 2022-23 school calendar. Second. 
Moved by Mr. Ford. Moved and seconded. Second. Okay. Um, public comment. Any um, any objection? Okay. Any board members? Any comments? Any objections? Hearing none. So moved. Um, we're missing. It's underneath recommendation number two. Oh, I skipped it. Oh, I see it. Okay. Um, we had an agenda item number five, matter pertaining to the revision of policy file F-11.4, sick leave. Um, that um, particular recommendation failed in committee due to the lack of a motion. Madam Chair. Uh, Chair. Yes, ma'am. I would like to make a motion that the, that the board approve as presented at the committee on May 17, 2022, the revised policy file F-11.4, sick leave. Okay. Moved by uh, Dr. Trahan, second by Mr. Boisin. Any public comment? Uh, Dr. Trahan. Uh, I just think that, uh, really believe that sick days are days that are earned by our, our employees and uh, the, w they shouldn't go unpaid or, t or, or be reimbursed in some shape or fashion. And if we can go from 25 to uh, 45 days, it's, it's, that's an improvement. Thank you, Dr. Tron. Um, Mr. Boisin. Okay, any other board members? Uh, uh, I have a uh, little bit to say on it. It's, it's a very expensive proposition, as y'all well know. I gave y'all at the um, um, last committee meeting our CPA's uh, estimate. Um, I think I have a copy here. Uh, somewhere. If you guess that it's past its count. This is uh, uh, a financial uh, a, a, a line item on our in our financial statements on page 18 of our annual report. Uh, you'll see a line called compensated absences. Okay. Current policy, compensated absences are costing us, um, just for the sick leave part, $6,223,679. If we pass this and increase the uh, compensated absences from $6.2 million, it goes to $8,852,485. Uh, a difference of $2.6 million. Uh, I'm not against giving our uh, teachers, janitors, and cooks, and, and uh, employees uh, additional money, but unfortunately, that's not really the group of people that are going to have enough compensated, uh, enough days uh, at the end, you know, when they go to retire to collect this. Uh, many people barely have the 25 days. And thanks to COVID, it's kind of wiped it out. Um, the majority of the people that will have the 45 days are our upper level supervisors, and central office people, and 10, 10, 11, and 12 month people. And that's because those are the people that get additional days given to them to, in their accumulated days by the retirement system. If you look at the report, uh, this particular report, um, the lower end, they have, don't have, yeah, you know, I'm looking at the, this, just starting with the half of pay, the, the second half of the, this report. Um, 11 days, 12 days, 12 days, 15 days, 12 days, um, and it goes on and on and on. The ones that have excessive, uh, have, extra days and and we're not talking ex excess days that the way it was presented to us by mr martin it's not we're, we're not paying them for excess days that they cannot use for retirement we're giving them everybody an extra 20 days all right that they can use for retirement so we're just up in the choice that they have from 25 to 45 but that's going to 
create a liability for Terrebonne Parish school system of a total of $9,304,540. If you want to pay it to, the, to, to our, our, our retirees who are not coming back to work next year, I don't have a problem with that. But I just want you to know that I think, my personal opinion, $9 million are that includes the annual leave, just on the sick leave, it's 8.8 .8 million. That's a significant amount of money that we could use for employees that are gonna be here next year. You know, maybe a little raise or something. Because they're gonna be the ones coming to work and working the tent in the trenches. Now, on the other side of the coin, it's very encouraging that our district is moving and our board's moving in a direction to reward good employees. I, I, I like that idea. Um, and then when the idea was first introduced, I was all for it. Uh, Mr. Martin talked to me about that months and months and months ago. And I told him it sounded like a great idea because we, we, we were thinking that you could use excess sick leave. Those are the sick days. Excess sick leave is the days that you cannot use to retire, toward retirement. And so it's a use them or lose them thing. But that's not what this policy is stating. This policy is, staying, is stating that they can use 45 days of their total accumulated leave, okay? Um, I don't believe we should be diverting millions of dollars to a policy that doesn't really benefit kids. And it, by that I mean it's, teachers are retiring, the supervisor are retiring, they're not gonna be back to, to do their job next year. I think we should take that nine million dollars, do something that might benefit the kids and our and our employees that are returning to work. Got a lot more I could say, but I think I made my point. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Mr. Ford. There's some information that I think we have missing, and and uh, although you guys did make some good points. I have to support uh, Mr. Hamner on this one in that just in a general statement that I'd rather spend money on teachers and current employees that are going to be here enriching the lives of our kids uh, rather than people that are leaving the district. So if I had to choose between the two, that's where my, my choice would lie with, with those that are still here. However, I would like to see, and I think we, we asked for it, or I know I've I, sent information that I'd like to see how much the district pays in substitutes, not necessarily in the last two years because of COVID, we've had uh, a lack of usage of substitutes, I assume, but years prior to that, how much money was spent on subs versus how much we would spend on uh, this, this recommendation. So having said that, if, if no one can produce that information today, I don't think we should vote on it, and I'd like to uh, suggest that we table this for later discussion. Thank you, Mr. Ford. I have a couple of uh, things that I'd like to share. I spoke with uh, Mr. Falls, who is in charge of retirement here. Um, he uh, told me, uh, he, unfortunately, he couldn't be at the meeting tonight. I wish he would have been um, to be able to share with you and answer any questions, but um, he tells me that there are 90 employees retiring this year, and out of the 90, there are only 39, so only a third of those retirees are gonna be eligible to collect on these additional days if we should approve it. Um, of that, there are approximately 704 days, and what would be paid out this year is $210,000. Um, now, he also said, on average, just to give you an example, um, a teacher with 25 days available for this uh, particular payout gets about $8,000 for those 25 days. So when you add 20 days to that, that average teacher salary is about $320 a day. Um, that gives an increase of $6,400, which the total payout instead of $8,000 for those teachers, it would be $14,400.
Now, if you take the average of $320 a day for a teacher, remember those teachers that use those days, we're paying them $320. But we're also paying for a substitute to come in, and that's at $150. So if we're talking about cost savings to the district, the savings is more realized when you're paying them for not using those days because you're paying not just the 320, you're paying the extra 150, so that's $470 basically that you're paying instead of 320. It also provides an incentive for teachers to, uh, to show up and to teach. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons we know as employees of a school system that people don't show up at work. Most of the time it's for good reason, they're, they're actually sick. But sometimes it's maybe a family member sick, maybe, um, maybe they want a shopping day, maybe they just want a personal health day, you know, to stay home, I'm, I've got enough. Um, but the incentive, especially those that have figured out this is the year they're planning to retire and they go and visit the retirement office here and they see that they have these days left it's hard to leave something on the table, you know? You know you're, you're leaving, leaving this stuff without getting paid for it, and you could have gotten paid for it. Your, your neighbor teacher got paid for it because they used the sick days. So I just think that it's really something that you are, um, you're giving something to someone that has earned it already, and we're not giving them all their days. They're able to take some of them towards increasing their retirement, but then others they just do leave on the table. And to get to what Mr. Um, Hamner reported to us that he got from the CPA, my understanding from talking to Mr. False is that these figures have to do with everybody in the district quit tomorrow. And these districts apply to that of those days that are available to them because of the sick days that they've accumulated. That's not going to happen. We're only losing, on average, about 80-something employees a year. We're not losing the entire district. So these numbers are not real numbers that we're dealing with. What I told you, the 210 is what we're going to have to pay this year based on the 90 employees that are retiring because only 39 of them are actually in this category. I also talked to Ms. Bro and asked her whether or not, you know, this is a, you know, an unmanageable amount on a yearly basis. And um, uh, she felt like it was not. Um, so that those are the facts that I have uh, discovered in my discussions with um, Mr. Falls and Ms. Bro. Yeah. If, um, are we allowed to pay more than the 25 days? Yes. I have something here that says it. This is the um, Louisiana sick leave reimbursement and injury on the job. And it says here, this is, I'll give you the copy, but it's from the Louisiana state legislature. And it says that, um, Upon retirement, such pay shall be at the rate of received by the member of the teaching staff at the time of retirement or death prior to retirement, provided that any parish or city school board may pay such unused sick leave beyond 25 days at its discretion. It's here. Yes, Mr. Board. I have a general question and, and it's got a follow up, so please bear with me. Uh, other than the superintendent, it's been it's been my understanding that every employee of the district has an annual contract, whether it's 180 days, whether it's 210 days, whether it's 12 month, right? So when they enter that contract, the terms of that contract are, are laid out and they have to sign. So what I'm getting at is if we change the policy now and make it concurrent with the people that are retiring now, we would essentially be breaking contracts with those people. So if anything, I think this should be, uh, if it's voted on, if it is approved, then it should be 
be laid to the 2022-2023 school year and those contracts thereof. Um, could our attorney address that, whether or not it has you something? You did a good job. Uh, what does it say in there? About breaking the contract? I, no, that's what I'm referring to. Oh. That's what I'm referring to is the contract <laughs> issue. So every employee of the district enters a contract at the beginning of the fiscal year, whether it's 182 days, 210 days, whatever. Since all those contracts have been executed up until this point, would we be breaking the law or breaking those contracts by retroactively going back and saying, okay, you started the contract knowing that you only get 25 days, but now you're gonna get 45 days. Throughout the year, someone may have taken those days because they didn't think they were going to get it. That's so correct. So I think if, if, if we're being fair, then if we do vote on it and it gets approved, then from here on out, we say, okay, starting fiscal year 2023, which starts July 1st, any contract entered thereafter will be subject to the terms of this recommendation. So your policy would only go in effect July 1st. In the new year? Yes. I mean, without seeing the terms of the contract, um, and I, I, I mean, yes, it could be considered a breach if you change the terms of the contract. Okay. Uh, so if we would make the policy, it would, have to, it would have to be after this contract ends. I mean, could it be July, I mean, June 1st? I mean, what's the but yeah, Dr. Yarbrough, what, what is your opinion on that? The contract does not address sick days. It doesn't have anything about sick it days in it? Days. It only talks about the number of days the person worked and their salary. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, that's, thank right. you for that. And Ms. Bro, um, could you address Mr. Uh, Ford's concern about um, substitute pay? Could you give us an approximate amount or tell us anything about how much substitute pay that you have in a, uh, a school year? Uh, I'm not really prepared to answer exactly how much we pay in a school year. Um, it, it obviously varies uh, depending on uh, how many people are out, whether we are able to find certified substitutes, whether we have non-certified subs, if Dr. Yarbrough is able to hire uh, retired teachers and they have the higher pay rate. Uh, so it, it really varies. I mean, if, if we're interested in looking at it, that's something that um, I can run a trend on and we can take a look at it, but it, it's not a number that I'm prepared to give you tonight. Okay. Would you say it's a big number, though? It's, it's broken up into such tiny pieces all over the budget between kindergarten teachers, elementary teachers, secondary teachers, counselors, you know, anybody who gets a substitute, bus drivers and everybody, and it's broken up all over in little bits in the budget. So it, th I would need to run something to um, combine all of those numbers together. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Well, I'd, I'd like to move to table this discussion to what we have that information. Okay, well, we ha already have a motion. You can make a substitute motion. Yeah, you have to make a substitute motion. The motion yes. right now is to- He moved to table it, and I'll second that motion yeah, to I table. Made a motion, I'll second it. You can't make two. Okay, so we have a, mo a, sec a substitute well, motion on this to table it, table. and a second. Okay, do we have any public comment? try and catch me up okay we have a substitute motion on on the board right on, on the floor right now right we have a substitute motion table
that the original motion was made by Dr. Trump. Trump. Seconded by Mr. Boston. And seconded by Mr. Boston. And that was the motion to accept his, the, the additional 20 days. Now, Mr. Ford has made a substitute motion to table it. And Mr. Hammond has seconded it. So we'll vote on that. Do we have any public comment first? Um, Roll call vote. Yeah, I got a comment. So a, a yes is to table it, a no is not. Hold on, Ms. Benoit. This point of clarification. Um, Mr. Ford, when you mean table it, you mean bring it back at a later date? Or, or, or are you trying to get more information, basically, what it's going to cost? Or, well, table sometimes means just, just let it go. You follow what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. I mean, I want to make sure I'm voting for the right thing. Because I'm in favor of the extended time. I just want to make sure we're clear on what we're actually doing. Could so you just go on, can I just make a, 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 a comment then? Uh, could you just go on and just make that motion to bring it up at the next committee meeting? Or could you add that to your motion? Sure. Yeah, just go and do that. Yeah. So I recommend that we uh, make a motion that we table this topic for discussion on our June 21st committee meeting. Could, uh, can, can I make a request? Could you do it for the July committee meetings? I mean, it's not going to make a big difference because it will be retroactive anyway, too. Sure. Thank you. It would be to refer it to the next, to the July Education Technology and Policy Committee meeting. Yes, yes. Okay. So a, a yes is to defer. All votes are in. Object objections by Ms. Benoit, Mr. Dehart and Dr. Trahan, absent Mr. Lavard. Thank you, Ms. Benoit. Now we go to item 12, Superintendent Agenda. 12A. Yeah. Yes, sir. Who was that again? I think we, 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 we passed all that. All that passed, Mr. DeHart. Okay. All right, then. So number one, matter bearing upon acceptance of bid received for site preparation at Broadmoor Elementary and Berg Elementary Schools, modulars. Y'all see that recommendation? It's supposed to be at the, at the desk, at the table. Substitute motion, there's four or five documents. I don't have it. <coughs> it's, it's there. Okay. 
Okay, so the recommendation is that the board accept the lowest bids received, meeting all specs for site prep in response to Hurricane Ida at Broadmoor Elementary, Berg Elementary, from the following vendors, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So Broadmoor Elementary is 4A contract, Contracting Group, LLC, 354 West Main, and Berg Elementary is 4A con Contracting Group, LLC, 354 West Main, Thibodeau, Louisiana. Moved by Mr. DeHart, second by Ms. Benoit. Anyone else would like to discuss their recommendation? Mr. DeHart, Ms. Benoit, yes, any board member? Or then Jackson, here, no so ordered. Okay, number two, matter bearing upon acceptance of bid received for abatement services in response to Hurricane Ida at East Street School slash TAPS. So the recommendation is that the board accept the lowest bid received meeting all specifications for abatement services in response to Hurricane Ida at East Street School slash TAPS in the amount of 48500 from One Priority Environmental Services, LLC, 4028 Daly Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas, 76180, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved. Move by Ms. Benoit, second by Mr. Ford. <coughs> anyone, anyone in the audience like to start that uh, recommendation? Ms. Benoit? Mr. Ford. I, I just have a question as far as funding. Is it there funding available, federal funding for uh, asbestos abatement? And or if so, are we using, utilizing that funding? This is gonna be FEMA, yeah. So, yeah. Or, or from yeah. Our, our, yeah, we'll pay it in reimburse, reimburse. FEMA reimbursable. Okay, thank yes, you. sir. Yep. So this is FEMA? Yes, okay. yes. Any other board member? Are there injection? Hand us all order. Okay, so before I mention uh, three and four, I'd like to kind of officially, the question everybody's been wanting to know is repair or rebuild for South Terrebonne and Ellender. So our architects are here tonight. Merlin Lee Red has been working diligently on South Terrebonne and um, Craig Hebert has been working diligently on Ellender to get us a cost for the repair. So based on their cost assessments, okay, and the FEMA 50% formula, both cost assessments for repair are under the 50% threshold. So just to give you an idea, South Terrebonne's cost assessments is right at about six, excuse me, 10.6 million, which is far less than 50% Excuse me, Mr. Hosea Ron, we, uh, it's nine o'clock. I need a motion now to, uh, to extend Mr. the meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move we extend our meeting uh, by one hour. Good move by Mr. Hamlin. Second. Second by Mr. Ford. Any in orders would like to discuss that? Mr. Hamlin, uh, Mr. Ford, any, other, any board member or any, any objection? He no so order. Sorry, sir. Okay, no problem. So, um, so the 10.6 is less than 50% of the cost of a new facility at South Terrebonne. So therefore, um, that is officially gonna be declared a repair remodel. So that's good news, repair remodel for South Terrebonne. Ellender, based on Craig Hebert's estimation, it, very diligent in, in both of their work, $17.5 million cost to repair Ellender. That is significantly below the 50% threshold to build a new Ellender. Okay, so both of those numbers come, and we weren't quite expecting Ellender to be a repair, more of rebuild, but both of them, good news, they're repair remodels. Now here's the good news about that, um, and it's exciting because it's gonna reduce the amount of times that those time that the students stay in the portables or the temporary campuses. That's a good thing. We're looking two to three years as opposed to four to five years. Um, it's gonna be a total remodel, redesign on the interior. We're talking new floors, walls, ceilings, and enhancements to the building that can update and modernize some of the inside of both of the schools. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing is we will give opportunity for our stakeholders, students, parents, and, and community members to kind of give some input on what it's gonna look like inside. So we'll call those meetings, invite the stakeholders, and we'll get started soon. The first project is a roof project with, that's gonna happen relatively soon so the work's gonna get started on both of those facilities. Anything else you'd like to know on the repair of both of those schools? That's first time we're kind of putting it out there, so that's, that's what everybody's kind of been waiting for, the official word of that. So Mr. Pellegrin, that's why we asked you to stay to kind of hear that news so we can kind of coordinate, kind of communicating that to your, your, your folks at South Terrible. So thank you for being here. 
Merlin, Craig, anything y'all want to add to that? Anything in particular? Any particular questions for our architects that worked on those two projects? Yeah, I, I have a question. Sure thing. Um, Would y'all want to come up if it's for them? And I, I, come think, up. I think what you're saying is great, and I, and, and I think that schools be back online a lot quicker. But we do know sometime, and you know, some of us, most of us know that sometime by repairing, sometimes it may cost just as much as to replace. Right. It's possible. It, it could be possible. Yes, so, so, so I'm, well, I just wanted just us to understand that that's not be too over cautious thinking that we're going to, you know, it's not going to cost as much because sometimes replacing things cost just as much as, I mean, as, as building, building up off the ground again. And that's my concern. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So y'all want to address the estimates. Adam, you're welcome to join in, but the estimates right now based on what you, based on RS means, which is a consistent value of all the things you looked at, it doesn't meet the 50% and it will not meet it at any time from, from here on out. It's going to be below the cost of a new building. Anything you want to elaborate on that, fellas? Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Ogeron. Uh, I mean, I, I'm on South Terrebonne. I'm not going to speak for Craig on, on Eleanor. But uh, the, the biggest thing that we saw at South Terrebonne was the, the existing roof system that, that damaged, got damaged heavily in the storm, allowed for water infiltration into the structure. Uh, I think you have some, I don't know if it's on this one, but you have some projects for abatement at South Terrible that's coming up, being handled by the environmental consultant. I see on some of them already. So the, the abatement of the, all of that flooring and things that are in South Terrible is going to be gone and done, you know, prior to us doing any renovation work by the correct cons uh, abatement uh, contractors. Uh, so the, the, the work, we've already started assessing Repairs. I have a, a meeting next week with a roof consultant to look at the things. What we have to do when we take care of the new roof system like that is make sure that the application of the the new roofing system is going to meet the wind load and things of that sort because it exceeded so much damage. So, uh, but from a cosmetic standpoint on the outside, you can see there wasn't really much physical damage to South Terrebonne, but the interior, like Mr. Orgeron said, it's going to have a lot of renovation, repair work, and stuff that on, the, on that part. So, same thing with the, the new gym or the the the, uh, the separated gym. Uh, say it's not really new, and the the one-story building in the back. So, and we've been working. I had a meeting last week with the the baseball coach about the the baseball field and starting to get that back in shape. You know, so we're going to be doing all that as a separate package, all the fencing and things like that to get the everything sealed off to the back to the athletic facility and things of that sort so so we're in the progress of it'll be several projects going out for that one facility you know like the roof is going to be one so we get the buildings sealed up and closed in before we can do any interior repairs the site work with the fencing athletic facility thing like that will be another package and then we'll have the, the major thing for the renovation on the inside of the buildings at that point adam any anything you'd want to add to the uh to the decision, the 50% rule in particular, uh, for just for the clarification. Yeah, so um, it's pretty much for the quickest turnaround, the repair is probably the easiest answer um, because if we're talking about a replacement value, we're talking about environmental consulting with historic preservation. But I think the most important part that we want to talk about is FEMA is going to cover all costs, no matter what it is, we keep seeing this increase in cost for market values. They will cover the 90% of all the repairs, no matter what it turns out at the bid. So these RS mean numbers may be lower, um, because, but it's consistent for the repair value and the replacement value. So once again, FEMA will cover all of it, no matter what the actual cost is. It may end up being more than it would be for a repair, I mean, for a replacement, but FEMA will still cover it. So I think that's the most pushing part is as long as we stay forward and the architects cost estimates that were pushed through are very detailed and they should be very easy to fly with FEMA to cover the cost. Thanks, Adam. Yes. Well, I'm ecstatic to hear that we're going to be moving forward, repair, and it seems like that's, you know, it's going to go quicker, thank God. But uh, you mentioned something about the roof starting. Probably it's 
soon as we can, but we still have to wait for abatement before that? Well, I, I think that's going to be going on. I, I don't know if they're receiving bids. That's the next that's a recommendation coming up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, no, we got to, we, we have to put out the design package for the roof replacement, per se, you know, and then in talking to, I mean, the, the, the issues of supply and demand and materials, you know, as you went before when you had a, the, the old gym that was going to be re-roofed on South Airbone a couple years back, mm -hmm. it's even gotten worse, okay? Right, so, right. I mean, insulation and certain mm -hmm. things are just far, far lead items. I mean, I was told this morning that particular insulations could be anywhere from nine months to a year just to receive insulation in. So, you know, so we're going to try to work those things as alternatives that we're looking at, you know, to, to, to build the system back to where it can meet the, the wind loads. So, you know, we're hoping we can, we can design a system working with the suppliers and what's available, you know, to get that faster. Right. Um, I just forgot my question. Um, I, I did want to ask also to mention that to you, um, we have, I don't know how many portables we have at ST. I can't remember, uh, but are we going to be able to build a new wing, perhaps? Well, that, that, that's, that's one particular item that we're discussing. That's okay. right, because if some of those portals will receive more damage than the other ones. Some of them are very old. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's four, six, eight. It's a ten, either 10 or 12 of them, well, okay, in that thinking, number. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, that's one possibility that we're discussing is, is taking that money that FEMA could allocate for the repair or replacement of those portables and put them into a permanent structure to replace that good. that's one that's one object that one alternative we're looking at that's correct okay. good, good, good. yes it's just going to be the community's going to be excited to see something going on right really soon right. thank right. you mr yeah. Libre. I, don't, I don't really have a question but i do want to make a comment that of the people that i've spoken to from the south terrible community they they were really adamant about wanting to keep their school and this is going to be a grace for them because they they want they didn't they want to preserve their school it's a 57 Cadillac, and they don't want to drive around a Chevy Cruze. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's, it's an opportunity for us to, to make, make it a little better, but preserve what was there. So I'm, I'm ecstatic about it, too. Thank you. OK, Craig, any, any comments on Eleanor, where, where we're at on Eleanor? So we're still really in, uh, going back and forth with some of the information we're providing also on the original estimate we submitted. I know there's been some comments, and I know we're submitting some information back I still think in Ellender, um, having heard just recently that it looked like we were headed in the direction of a repair versus a replacement, that there's still a lot of very unanswered questions that have to be addressed and, and, and information that we'll need to discuss. I think it's very early, but as any of you have seen, if you've driven by or seen pho photographs of it, excuse me, um, Ellender was greatly damaged. And it's, it's, it's further damaged over the last few months just simply because of the fact that it's, it's, it hasn't been able to really stop what's been happening to it. There's so much with the roofs, the walls, windows, door systems, and all that caved in. And so despite every best effort to stop it and, 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 and maybe stop the bleeding, I guess you could say, it just, it just has, I think, gotten to a point where it's it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of time. And um, but we'll know more as the estimates come out and as we finalize our efforts with the repairs with all south and the estimates um, that we're putting forward to you. Looking forward. All right. Questions. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, so the recommendation on the floor is that the board accept the bid received meeting all specifications for abatement services in response to Hurricane Ida at South Terrebonne High School in the amount of 136750 from Gill Industries, LTD 17, 18 Engineers Road, Suite B, Bell Chase, Louisiana, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. Move by Mr. Visor and second by Dr. Trahan. Anyone in the audience would like to discuss the recommendation? Mr. Visor. Yes, Dr. Trahan. No, sir. Any no. board member? Are there any injection? Hear none so ordered. The okay, recommendation number four that the board accept the bid received, meeting all specifications for abatement and remediation services in response to Hurricane Ida at Ellender 
Memorial High School in the amount of $305,000 from Gill Industries, 1718 Engineers Road, Suite B, Bell Chase, Louisiana, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved. Moved by Dr. Charles, second by uh, Mr. Vizan. Anyone else would like to discuss that, uh, that recommendation? Dr. Tryon? No, sir. Dr. Uh, Mr. Vizan? Oh, I'll call you doctor. Mr. Vizan? Or any board member? Mr. Ford? This is just, I guess, to educate me and maybe the audience out there, whoever's listening, but um, the abatement is considerably higher at Eleanor, but it's a newer school. Were they still utilizing asbestos in when Ellender was built to, to that extent? I thought that was uh, done in the late 60s. Good question. So, um, as many of you know, Ellender was constructed in, constructed in two phases. Phase one was 1975 was it, when it was the junior high school. The second phase was in 1987 when it officially became Eleanor Memorial. Yes, there's still asbestos throughout in places identified in the flooring, uh, in some portions of the insulation, and in some of the ceiling tiles. Okay. Just... You okay, Mr. Ford? Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm baffled at how much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Is there an injection? Here no so on. Okay, recommendation five. Recommendation that the board accept the proposal meeting all specifications for architectural services for the Legion Park Elementary School window replacement project from Orchestrate LLC, 207 Equity Boulevard, Homa, Louisiana. Issue a notice to proceed with plans and specifications for the project, money to be derived from the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, uh, answer three, and authorize the advertising of bids, direct any major project changes to be reported to the buildings food services and transportation committee prior to advertising of bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto <laughs> moved by mr dehart second by Ms. Soleil. anyone else like to discuss the recommendation mr dehart okay Ms. Soleil. of that injection here none so on it <laughs> like to make a note that that's the first it's coming from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, recommendation six. The recommendation is that the board accept the proposal meeting all specifications for architectural services for the outdoor classroom slash play spaces project from Jeremy Bruce Architects, P.O. Box 1247 Homa. Issue a notice to proceed with the plans and specifications for the project. Money to be derived from the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, ESSER 3, authorize the advertising of bids, direct any major project changes to be reported to the Buildings, Food, Service, and Transportation Committee prior to advertising of bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. Move on, Ms. Benoit, second by Doc, uh, Mr. Vizan. I thought it was Doc again, I'm sorry. Anyone else would like to discuss that, uh, that, that, that motion? Uh, Ms. Benoit? Uh, Mr. Vizan, uh, any other board <coughs> members? I've been injection here, no so order. Okay, seven, personnel section, leave of absence. The recommendation is that the board approve a family and medical leave in accordance with policy file F-11.4A for Dorothy Rose, school bus operator in the transportation department beginning May 20th, 2022 through May 31st, 2022. Move by uh, Mr. Vizan. Second by Ms. Benoit. Anyone in the office like to discuss the recommendation? Mr. Vizan, Ms. Benoit, any board member? Are there any objections here on so on? Okay. Is that it? Yeah, no, you got the uh, personnel action. Okay. Okay, letter B is personnel actions for the period of April 25th, 2022 through May 27th, 2022. List of non-instructional support personnel, appointments, resignations, and retirements. That's for information only. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ozer. Uh, item 13, individual school board member, 13A. Myself, Mr. Gregory Harley, acknowledge of official school board members training hours earned for the parish school board members. Mr. Mike Legard, District 1. Mr. Gregory Harley, District 2. Mr. Matt Ford, District 3. 
There's Debbie Benoit, District 4, Ms. Stacey Soli, District 5, Mr. Clive Hanna, District 6, Mr. Roger Dior, District 7, Dr. Mabel Trenha, District 8, and Mr. Dan Visey, District 9. For the calendar year of 2021, by the Louisiana High School Asso uh, Association, according with Act 705, recommendation. Uh, that the board acknowledge the official transcript from the Louisiana School Board Association for training hours earned by Terminal Parish School Board members for calendar year 2021 in accordance with Act 705 and further order state acknowledgement spread across the minutes as follows. Mm -hmm. Move by Ms. Benoit. Second by Mr. Vizan. Anyone would like to discuss the recommendation? Uh, Ms. Benoit. Yes, sir. Mr. Vizan. Or any board member? Are there any injection here no sorted? At this particular time, I'll go on and read out the hours. Uh, Mr. Mike Lagarde, District 1, 14.5 hours. Gregory Harding, District 2, total 18 hours. Mr. Matt Ford, District 3, total 8 hours. Ms. Debbie Benoit, District 4, total of 16 hours. Ms. Stacy Soley, District 5, total 10 hours. Mr. Clive Hanna, District 6, 16.5 hours. Mr. Roger Dehart, District 7, 10 hours. Dr. Mabel Trenha, District 8, 11.5 hours. And Mr. Dan Vizan, uh, District 9, 11.5 hours. And let the record reflect that everybody, all board members have been in compliance uh, with that act. Now I'll entertain um, item number 14, entertain a motion to adjourn. Move by Ms. Benoit, second by Mr. Ford. Anyone in the audience would like to discuss that? Ms. Benoit, Mr. Ford, nope. any injection? Meeting adjourned.